Yo. <laughs> Yo. Oh no, I forgot to mute your stream, bro. There we go. Well, I heard myself a second time, and I got so worried. I was like, something's broken. There's something not going. There's something not. What's going on, bro? What's what's cry? What what we started it? We started it earlier with the wish popping. Brand new whip just hopped in. Yeah. But. Yeah, we're actually we're about that. We're 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 looking. We're looking. You looking for a new car? SUV, yeah. Okay. Wait, what are you driving right now? Uh, we have a Nissan Altima, and then I I do literally have my Ford 500. That is in disarray. I literally I started working from home, like I just never drove it, and then like we got the house, and then like we had to, like be out that day, and like I tried to start, and it was like it was like. <laughs> Ooh, I was like okay. Wait, what year is it? Six. Oh, apparently your volume is really low. I have to bring your volume with. No, it's not. I don't turn your down. It's just that everything keeps like resetting. Oh, it's no. it's yeah, team it's speak okay. scuff, bro. Everything's super scuffed. I think it's actually the compression that I've set up. Let me compress you a little. You can't compress this, bro. What you mean, bro? <laughs> it's like that scene in Star Wars when they're in the garbage compactor. Yeah, how do I make you louder, bro? Ah, uh, I see. Yeah, we for we kind of forgot to do this part too. My bad, my bad, chat. Let me put some compression on you. So we can't be mad at him. We really can't. Bring you up to th like three decibels. I think that's gonna be enough. And then you should be loud now. What's up, Stocky? What's up? What's up? It's not popping. Okay, I can I can I can get it in. No, I gotta make you louder, bro. Say so something, bro. Yeah, what's good? What's popping? <clears throat> check check check. Why check. were you at negative seven? All right, now you should be good, bro. Say something. Bro, no, I'm, I'm, I'm actually like so negative seven. I had you at plus six for last <laughs> podcast. I don't know. Maybe you were. Wait, maybe you. Why was is Aphek like muted on Team Why, why do I have? Okay. You, you were, uh, you were. Maybe you, you were like raging in Warzone or something. We were playing last time. I put you down volume. Raging when you were like this. You mean when you playing the game? Oh, like bro, I told you this that one podcast. I was like, if you ever see me like this, I've given up. <laughs> <laughs> I got the mic guard, the, the mouse on the chest and shit. All right, well, uh, all right, my bad, my bad, guys. We'll, we'll cut that out later. But welcome to episode episode six of the Aflux Shocker podcast. We still haven't changed the name because we don't really see a need, a need to at this point. It's just we just yeah. chilling. But, yeah, uh, you don't you don't want to be um. What, what are some of those rapper names? Um, Lil Tecca, Lil Pump. Are you talking about the Lils or? There's like a bunch of like you know like uh, I don't want to use one from IRL but um, not that he'd ever watch this but there's just some silly names and you think like you either a have to rebrand or b you keep it and you just seem a little silly you know mm -hmm. but you, but you, uh, it's different that's different you had to pick a name and go with it this is easy because we just say it's Doctor A Flick Doctor podcast and we run with it so yeah definitely I agree and uh, I'm still trying to like mess around with I mean, your audience look at Joe Rogan, Joe Rogan podcast right I mean through Joe Rogan experience we can we can put we'll throw something at the end of it. The Aphex Shocker, Pog Champ. <laughs> Pog Champ. Uh, okay, whatever. But yeah, man. Uh, we were talking about, before, you know, the, the, the audio settings were scuffed up. We were talking about cars, bro, because it, it seems like we both have some issues with cars right now. Uh, for me, I am I am kind of, I'm hurt. I was, right when, the, right when all these announcements for new things are coming up and I'm getting back into guitars, so I kind of want to like start collecting those too. Now all the expenses are coming up because things are breaking because I'm not using them anymore. I've been paying my car payment for, it's it's September now, so it's been like five, off, six bro. months. Let's get, that, let's get that debt out. Well, it's been five or six months of me paying the car payment on a car that I don't use anymore because of quarantine. Oh sell it bro no nah, i can't i love it too much bro and then once you know i start going outside yeah. again i don't want to I, I don't want to start i don't want to leave it it's a great car so but uh i let my mom borrow it one day because uh, her car has been having some issues her car is really old it's eight years old now isn't that wild i i used to think 2012 vehicles were like a vehicle that came out in 2012 is like that's a pretty new car that's eight mm. years old now bro time zip 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 we got a 20 yeah we have the 2012 nissan ultima so we're driving right now in that 2006 all black chrome ford 500 looking crispy as hell got a new battery in that bitch <clears throat> slap it nice bro and i think the but the, the, i think the rule with uber you can't make that an uber I think the Ubers have to be at least right because it's a classic. Exactly, it's a classic. It can't yeah. be the car can't be more than five years old. I think. Uh, no, I think there's some. Um, if it's a cloud, I mean, maybe it's a, I think. Yeah, let's see. Uber driver. 
I think car age. It's a classic, I think. All chrome black. Oh, the, it's it's 15 years now. My bad. Yeah, I could. Okay, well, let's do the math. 2006 plus that's 2021, bro. I'm good, and it's all black chrome classic. So I could probably drive for Uber Black and make even more money if I wanted to on the side hustle. But would you be happy? Stream. Let's say you know how you went to the to the beach recently, and like. You, oh yeah, I was like, what are you talking about, you creeper? No, oh, I'm yeah, just I, saying, like, you went to the beach. I mean, you said it on the podcast, bro. I'm just saying. I know. I, I thought I thought it was something else. Though. We literally have a podcast named Back from Vacay. So, expensive things on my desk. But yeah, like let's say let's like throw yourself back to that day instead of driving to the airport or wherever you got there. Unless if you did take an Uber, would you be happy if your Uber was showed up and it was a 2005 Honda Accord, bro? I literally told you a story. I think the, the Uber that showed up was you know how Uber's like uh, 20 minutes away and they get there in like like 15. Yeah. The dude shows up five minutes late, of course. Like oh he's 20 minutes away. Nope, he's actually 25. He gets there. In like this van, bro, <clears throat> like a little rust on it. I'm like, how are you? What? How'd you get? Did you just show them like one side of the van, and they're like, oh yeah, it looks good. And literally, when we got to like on the highway going like 65, it was like going like this. It was like literally like this. Like, and I was like, oh my gosh, this dude is crazy. Yeah, I'm not. But we made it. Yeah, I'm, actually, but we, we made it. Flight. We actually, well, we made it to the airport alive, and then we missed our first flight by like five minutes. True. Well, he's like, uh, I don't even want to talk about it. Yeah. Well, now I gotta go tomorrow. I have a consultation because uh, my mom hit like a speed bump or something like that a little too hard, and she drives an SUV. I drive oh. a sports car, which has been lowered and has a body kit on it, and uh, I think she yeah, hit. Flex a little bit, bro. Nah, dude, she hit it against something. And then the front left bumper, just like the the body kit, the screw on it, just like popped off, and then it just like hit the ground. And I gotta get that fixed. There's a bunch of gashes and tears in the paint. <sighs> it's just been sitting out there. I don't have a garage, so it's oh, it's no, a yikes. Bro. But you're going you through it too, bro. You got the you got the sewer going on uh, right now. Oh yeah, it's true. That's true. We did have the main pipe clog main sewer clog i think or something like that and uh chat was like oh if it just fix it go to um go to home depot and buy this um really long snake and, and do it yourself so zoe doesn't think you're an imbecile or something and then you know it's like 200 feet this way and it's underneath the garage and they had a jackhammer down uh and then these dudes are out there for six hours digging two dudes Digging, and I'm bigger than both of them, obviously, so I could have done it probably in four. But it took them six hours to dig this hole. And then um, it was also leaky because it's like an old clay pipe. And they used to put, like, um, cement around it. And, like, I guess the roots growing or whatever, whatever. It cracked it. It was leaking. And so they had, re they had replace it um, at the 90-degree angle. And then it sucks because eventually I think we're going to have to replace the whole pipe that leads out to the to the manhole. And that's going to be hella expensive, like 15, 20 grand, he was saying. So hopefully we can just sell the house before that. Um, but uh, yeah, man, it was just a mess. And obviously, like, we couldn't shower. You couldn't um, use, like, the dishwasher. Dishwasher was, like, a lot of water. So that was, like, something we definitely couldn't do. And then um, shower was a big one. And then the uh, washer was the worst because I ran out there. And, like, it was just, it was literally bubbling up in the mudroom. Like, it was, like, literally, like, kind of, like, shooting up. I was like, what the hell? Yikes, so it's something bro. we had to fix right away. It wasn't like, oh, hey, like, go figure it out. True. Chat trying to screw me over. <laughs> They're just like, just, just put. Why? How you not have water? Just get water. I don't know. People, I think, uh, forget how. Uh, what's the word? Like, how much of an importance having like running water is? Because I, I don't know. Maybe I think people well, I focus a, a lot. Thirteen month old, so I can't like. <laughs> I can't just. And then he dude, he had like no clothes to wear. It was just a mess. But yeah. You yeah, know, and then every night part of his routine. That's yeah, because kind of kids are dirty, bro. Like they get, yeah. they get, yeah, they're oh, messy, man. they're dirty. Like you need oh, the shower bro. operational at all times because you never know when an emergency might occur. So he just touches his hair every night when he eats. Like he'll peanut butter and jelly and just go like this. <laughs> and like I like I it like I'm like oh because I give him a bath every night. I'm just like oh no, dude. Every night it's just everywhere. I'm like oh. I'm thinking oh maybe maybe he doesn't need one. I wipe his hands off and then it's just like. So it's a mess. <laughs> and then you're like, you 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 take yeah, your agree. baby over to your neighbor's house. They're like, you just got him there, and you're just like, uh, yo, we don't got water. <laughs> can, we, can I clean? <laughs> can I clean my son? They're like, can yeah, just just come in, bro. Well, yeah, guys. Well, welcome to episode six. Uh, th <clears throat> this title is of the future because we're talking about a lot of stuff that's honestly it should be called the imminent future this stuff is like either happening now or within like the the month everything we're talking about is happening so quickly today 
Yeah, I didn't know how to spell that, so I think we just went with the future, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, man. So, yeah. Well, uh, just like, what what you been playing, dude? What, what's been going on though? Let's. La- last time we talked to you, you just been crowned the king of the NC, the king of Emerald NC, and yeah, uh, man, I got I got many names now. Uh, you know, <clears throat> um, but yeah, last time I I got. Uh, Number one Emerald NC all time, both arms kills. Um, you know, I'm, I'm ahead of any VS because they're trash. Um, <laughs> TR3, it's three TR in front of me, so technically I'm fourth all time. Um, all factions, no big deal. Two of them, easy easy pass in a couple months. And then Sky Spy Man plays a little too much for me. I think the catch him, he's uh, a m- machine of uh, playtime. Um, so it is what it is. I'm still playing Planet Side um, mostly, so you guys don't have to. And you can live vicariously through me um and then i'm doing a little bit of warzone it's hard though because i have two sets of IRL friends that want to play warzone with me like i have a four-man group on one i have a four-man group on the other i have the normal joke boys and there's like six maybe of us and in, in that and and then i have some other people that want to play Warzone. so it's just like this weird too many people to play with so it's kind of a, it's kind of a, it's hard to to choose sometimes or you know everyone wants to play so i'm just doing warzone and, and plant side right now though Okay, man. I don't think I'm doing anything else. What about you? What's going on? I've been on a variety spree. Honestly, uh, there's been a, there's been a lot of different stuff uh, that I've been doing recently, uh, playing a lot of different games and just like really enjoying the fact that there's other fun stuff to do. Um, the I think the last game, yeah, the last game I beat was Ace Combat Seven. That was really fun. Just played through that. Slendy's helping me uh, learn how to emulate PS2 games so I can play the old Ace Combat 7s. To, or not Ace Combat 7s. The Ace Combat games that we're going to play. Uh, Ace Combat 5 and Ace Combat 0. Those are sick too. Uh, nice. Just watching gameplay of that. So I'm going to stream those as well. Really fun. Uh, played Game Dev Tycoon. We made... Uh, what's the word? We made we made Big Hand Games. And I think Owners is still on the channel. Uh, but we made big hand games, uh, just like the greatest developer of all time. And the last game I made before I, I that, one. that was fun that was to fun. play through. That was so much fun. I want to play more tycoon games like that. Uh, but we, we made uh, planet side Two a multi-million dollar game, millions of dollars of sales. And then that was it. I GG did. We made a billion dollars and then I called it GG. Bro, I could have um, been, we could have been huge. We could have been huge PS2 streamers. <laughs> so it was, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun playing those games. Now I'm playing uh, this game called Wasteland 3. Uh, they announced it at Gamescom. Or they didn't announce it, but the first thing I ever heard about it was in Gamescom. And then they literally released it as soon as Gamescom was over. Uh, so I'm playing that. It's a lot of, like Divinity and XCOM combined. Uh, and okay. that's been fun too. Just been like naming. You can name all the characters. So I've been naming them like one's a sniper. So his name's Interlude. He's like the Damio <laughs> main. I got I got the heavy assault. I got Yasber. <laughs> it's funny. So nice, nice. Uh, go on, go on. And you got where am I in there? <clears throat> oh no, I just started the game. I got you, bro. I'll, I'll make you next. Oh okay. I, just, I literally I've only played two hours of it. I, the right, first time okay. I started up was like last night. Like yeah, 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 yeah. On your <laughs> is that um Christmas lights or is that a ladder for a GI Joe? On your oh, those, YouTube, those right? are Christmas lights. Usually they're plugged in so you can't see it, but that usually lights the back stuff. But I don't know. Sense. I'm just I'm sense. just cozy. I don't want all the the lights to be on and stuff like that. So makes sense. I understand. But yeah, just playing a little bit of Planet Side, not too much. Uh, and I'm also managing the. Hey, the hey, hey, go ahead and tell chat, man. Go ahead and tell him what's going on. I just I don't know, bro. It's just it's not. I'm not feeling it. It's just I'm trying to make sure I don't make the mistake that I did last time, where right. I just I left. Let's be for, honest. For five years, but I'm just, exactly. I'm just, I'm just not feeling you it. You played a lot, a lot, and then pill. I think, uh, you know, it was a little bit of burnout. There's just too much going on. There's just too much intensity, which is kind of a good thing for me too. Like I said, it's almost good that I'm not on a team, um, because that, it's just, it's just, it's, just, it's like not, it's not work, but it's just something that you, you really, need, you have to invest on your team if you're actually going to be like a starter or, or close to the yeah. six man roster. So. I think it was it's a mixture of you know like I, I went really hard on trying to like improve maximize my performance and then just kind of got to this point where I didn't want to keep trying uh, like playing games went from being fun to like being frustrating and uh, I would just look back at my own content of like me playing Planet Side on stream and I wasn't being as funny I wasn't having as much fun personally. Uh, so my content and me as like, just intrinsically, I wasn't having fun either. 
So I just kind of took a step back and I, I'm still playing occasionally. Like I'll start a stream on and uh, like for the first hour I'll play planet side, but I don't care really about any of my stats. I just fucking run around. I think you saw this. Okay. stream. I think that's okay. Yeah. I don't <laughs> think that's a bad thing. <laughs> you saw the stream the other day. A bunch of people were clowning on me, bro. Cause I was just, that was a really good stream. It was really funny. Yeah. And it was one of the funniest streams. I got one of the funniest clips I think ever. We did like a whole speech and stuff. That was cool. But I just wasn't. I just haven't been feeling the game uh, as much as uh, I, I was when I came back. Uh, I think the there's not a lot of stuff for me to grind to. I'm really big on like shiny things and getting cool stuff. And uh, but you collect cool, Pokemon, Pokemon cards? Uh, I used to collect uh, Yu-Gi-Oh cards back in the day, bro. You know I had the foils, the the foil blue eyes white dragon first edition, oh, yeah. bro. I had all that stuff. What'd you do with it? It's probably worth a lot, isn't it? Uh, no, Pokemon cards are worth a lot right now, bro. Yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh cards are worth a lot. I sold them uh, like a year, two years ago. That's we... how you got the car. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah, that was the down <laughs> payment, bro. Uh, but yeah, I just uh, I used I like to grind for like shiny stuff, and the shiny stuff that I was grinding for, like the heavy assault armor, that grind isn't enjoyable. Like I don't want to just sit in a harasser shooting the air all day. <sighs> yeah. yeah. And then there's nothing that's really enticing me to play outside of that like i remember we were playing warzone and i was you could hear just the excitement in my voice of like all the fucking shiny shit that was in the game uh like what was it there was like the pink m16 or m4 or whatever what pink like mp5 your, your what is it called what are you into what do you mean you like uh the camo has my favorite thrown there or something I don't know. I just remember Cam the camo had like anime girls shit yeah, on yeah, it. Exactly. That's not the that wouldn't be my favorite. What are you talking about, bro? But it, it just it had like no, no. It's, I mean, you could say that, but I didn't say it had my favorite anime girl on it. I don't have one. I don't have a favorite anime girl, and two, they're just like drawings that they made because they'd have to license shit. And oh, do, they're yeah. just drawings. Okay. So they're literally just like drawings of random shit. But they have all these different cosmetics to like cater for all these different people, and you kind of like grind to get them with the season pass. Grind. So, okay. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, you grind to get them. That's, that's just... I don't know. You seem like you, you, you kind of sus right now, bro. Uh, <laughs> but I, I think it's, I just think it's cool. I think uh, the stuff in that game's exciting. It's, it's, it's refreshing. You get a lot of new cosmetic content. Well, it's also new, though, right? We, you know, I mean, it's very, it's like, it's, we played it like for like two seconds back in the day and we kind of left it. But it's kind of new for us, you know. But I, the whole point is, I think it's good that you're branching out to other things. Um, it keeps you around, and, and if, most importantly, it's about having fun. So yeah, so uh, I tell people, it's like you don't have to play Planet Side four, four or five, six hours a day. You don't have to do that. If you want to play for an hour, thirty minutes, or you don't feel like playing, don't play. Play, play to have fun. There's no point in being toxic or tilted about it. Just play to have fun, and so and that's yeah. what I do too. Sometimes I'm I'm sitting there, I'm like, I try to do two hours just for the stream, but because I have nothing else to play, because I'm garbage at everything else. But um, yeah. you don't have to be good at games to play them, though. That's true. I, yeah, that's true. That's. Yeah, so, I mean, anyways, it's just been one of those things where I'm waiting. I'm on standby. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to see what I think about it when I get there, but right now we're chilling. Uh, but, yeah, that kind of that kind of goes into, like, what I was going to say. The only thing I'm really, like, actually doing planet side wise when it comes to, you know, investing time and my own resources into it is uh, managing the Bax pill team. So, it's like, first it was doing the, I, I sourced the team. Uh, we kind of were left with a fragmented team at one point, uh, so I kind of sourced new people to fill up the roster and patch those holes. Then uh, scheduling scrims, getting the cohesion there, where like people enjoy playing with each other. And, it sounds uh, like it's a fun team. I haven't, I haven't really checked in since um, the last time. I mean, they, are they still? You know what I mean? They they seem very relaxed. You know me, I'm a little, I'm a psychopath, right? <laughs> um, and they don't seem like that in regards to pill. So is that still the is that still the case? Is there are there some are there some weeds in there that we had to weed out or anything or what do we what are we thinking about? They're they're definitely the the dynamic between everyone is very chill. It reminds me of how you would play like in ops or in a live server setting where you're doing something and the overarching goal is there, but they're not like overly investing like time into practicing. It's just like do it as you go, have fun. Call outs are there, but then also like comedy, charisma, just okay, having so it's like going genuine. Okay, watering home with your boys like back in the day. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's almost oh, like God. when you like if, you, if you've ever seen videos of, like people queuing up like CS:GO competitive matches, like a five-man queue of just all buds. It reminds me of that. So it's it's good cohesion. 
and uh, now we're oh, we're we're wait. going into pill two. And yeah, pill pill invitational is over, man. Yeah, pill it's done. Pill invitational over. Off season's about to end here, and then at the end of this week, aka tomorrow, tomorrow wow. Saturday, and Dude, I think Sunday. September. Yeah, <laughs> real quick, bro. Summer gone. Feels like I didn't even have a summer. I've been in this corner for ninety percent of the time. But you're you're a s- southern lad, right? You're to the south of me. So it stays warmer down there. Kinda. So the way that I look at it now that I'm not in school, it's pretty much summer as long as it's warm, you know? Um, I feel the you know, because the whole point of summer was you were out of school, but now it's like, bro, you know, I am the master of my own life. So that's just a rule that I live by, of course. It's something you don't have to do. But uh yeah, I get what you're saying. But you know, it's not like you're not working and now you gotta go back to work. But uh Yeah, yeah. Now at when this does it point, start to cold? Does it even get cold where you where you live? Oh yeah, it gets freezing here. It goes from extremely hot and humid to extremely cold well i'm not you said you said i'm like in the south bro i'm in the dc area that's like that's not that that's like the center i'm tripping that's coach yeah coach is even southern virginia is not as south as like a south carolina (sighs) you made me sound like a kid kona alabama mississippi like yeehaw partner (laughs) uh so (laughs) So yeah, it's it's the 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 weather does get pretty cold here, and it's a complete flip. The weather here is so bipolar. It's like extremely hot and humid, and then all of a sudden, after we get like a month of fall and spring, and then it's just complete Dude, opposite insane. to the next side. The birds chirp like literally for like three hours there, and then boom. They blow up and it's fucking 95 degrees, dude. <laughs> yeah, the birds go, yo, what's poppin'? And then they just, shoom, they go over to like wherever, they, back to the equator or whatever. Yeah, man, they're just always flying around the world or something so yeah but pill two coming up uh the i did like our first uh map flips today and confirm Ooh. with the first team who uh, are you playing uh reversing tide give me who's on the team what's uh wait, wait, what's uh that who, who's their who's on their uh, team like who's tides carry do you, have it? Do you even know anything about that team? I have nothing. I have no idea about any of them. <laughs> We're just going to verse them, bro. That's just how it is. If they show up, they show up. Vitamin Putin. I think um, that's a Luke DA House, person. Bold War. I don't know. Um, withdraw. I don't know any of these guys. Okay. So good luck to you guys. Sounds like you guys uh, have a, have a... I don't know. We don't know anything about this team. So Yeah. Um, cool. Uh, do you have any predictions? Do you think... Who do you think... Um, who do you think some of the best teams are, which everyone probably already knows, but who do you think is going to win the whole thing? So or who's going to be in the finals? Let's, let's just, let's get there. The final, that's the final? a difficult thing. Cause we'd have to look at the brackets and I'm not too sure where everything will fall. Okay, but no brackets, just the 27 teams. Who do you think would be in the finals? Regardless I the think the, I'll say my top three teams just because I'm not too sure how the brackets will line up. Because I think a lot of the teams that would play in the finals might verse each other earlier in the brackets, just because of the way the teams or the groups are set up. So I think the top three teams are, and in no particular order, B Hot, Ziz, and RA. Those three teams are, are extremely strong. I think another team to shout out though is Men Six, uh, the hydration team. <laughs> Men Six, bro, <laughs> shot. They are they are really strong. We versed them in a scrim. They they're pretty. They do Toby popping off. Toby MK with the I bolt. See Zenora Gragas on that team. Yeah, Gragas on that team. Zenora on that team. Sobroski the hard carry. You got Billy in the leadership role. Corrales even man. Yeah, Corrales. A it's a strong down, team. Back in the day, but then he kind of. I think he just disappeared. I don't know if his legs got cut off or something, but. He kind of disappeared for a while. Now he seems to be back. So good for him. Um, yeah. Cool. And they seem like they're all. I've played with Hydra, like playing like Among Us, playing in pickups, scrims, and uh, they're all. They're like they remind me of my team, but just European. Like just absolutely fun, having a good time. There's a little bit of rage maybe here and there from Sabrowski, but uh, outside of that, it's like you know they're there well, to. Graco, Graco won't like that. So. Oh, Graco is just gonna chill, so, bro. I feel like Greg okay. might he might not even get to play just because of his uh where he's at right now. He's, oh, he's still with his laptop, parents. And, yeah, he's on he's laptop Greg right now. That's why we haven't mm-hmm. seen him streaming in a while. That's uh, fair. But we yeah, top three teams: Z Y Z Z, uh, B H O T, and R A. What about you? Do you have any? Any teams that you feel Dude, like are strong? I I, there's like a 70, 67% chance that B-Hot does something crazy and gets disqualified. You never know. True. Um, and I feel like they get more and more lax every year they play the game because they win. And they're just a you know chill group of people. And they have a pretty, they have a pretty stacked team. So um, 
all things go well. I think the problem is, this is like I, I, the roster is very different this year. Not that these guys don't play together, but I am kind of curious. I feel like they a lot of the players have just drifted away from Plant Side a little bit. So I'm curious, you know, will the skills be there for for a good team like CYZZ, et cetera? I'm sure because um, you know they still have a stacked lineup. But I do think it might be a B Hot ZYZZ. I don't know anything about the Russians, man. Um, I th- they are. I watched some Let of the their streams. Their have it right here. Let me They're see. really, Rag. really strong. Hey, Reg is a beast. I do. Li- I actually like Reg. I like him as a. Uh, oh, they got Killers on the team. They put them together. Okay. And round, 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 round it non, and karate. <laughs> okay, they gotta. What? Uh, no, just the, the you're making sure to pronounce like everything. Well, it's the perfectly. way that they do it, the way they spell it, you know, it's kurati, k u r a u t y. Karate, you know I mean? bro, karate. <laughs> All right, what's, uh, what else we got? Enough of that. No one cares. Uh, we've already talked about everything about that. Let's move on to the next topic. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming. But yeah, pill pill's gonna be cool. Um. The you know good luck to the casters. I will not be casting in this next one. Um, good luck to the referees, the people running the games, uh, and the obviously the teams themselves. Hopefully everybody has fun, and uh, we'll see we'll see who ends up being that victor. Well, yeah, man. The most important thing is there's 27 teams. That's huge. So many new teams. Um, a lot of the talent spread out. Um, it should be a lot of fun, and that's the most important thing is we want to have fun so we can have another one, hopefully, you know, or the game will die. But people have said that the game is going to be dead for five years, so we'll see. I it's I think it's good for the game. So hopefully uh, people have fun. It's not too toxic, and you know, people don't get too butt hurt and, and realize that only one of the 27 teams can win because that's how a tournament works. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, yeah. hopefully it goes well. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to watch it. We got great um, viewership on the Invitational. A couple teams burnt out, a couple players burnt out. Um, it does go to show that having three scrims a day uh, and practicing daily is probably a terrible idea and that that uh, is something you probably shouldn't do even for uh, an online game. So Yeah, and especially if there's no end goal where you're really just playing for bragging rights, the, there is no like first place gets a trophy, a medal, a thousand dollars, something in game. Yeah. They get it's literally nothing. Unless there's money tied to it, I don't really. No one cares about that. I mean, as you know, I, I think about any like pick up seven v seven flag 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 football game that I've played in, or even you know tackle football, and it's just it's just who cares? I, I just want to win. But um, you know, it's part part of the reason I'm on the team because I'm a psychopath. So anyway. <laughs> yeah, so this is this is where we'd have like some sick transition. Zoom, bop, boom. Pew. Next topic. Hey, is... turn your um, turn your lights on. Nah, bro, I'd have to get up. Oh, okay, You'll see my sh- see my shorts, bro. They don't match my shirt, so sorry. Um, that was embarrassing. I'm sorry. There is there is big things coming to the game. Winds have changed, some people would say. Winds have changed. The temperature, the climate is changing as well on, on a certain continent, bro. Yeah, some people are saying summer's coming. So, summer's coming. It's funny because we were just saying that summer's leaving us. but Right, but not on Araxis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but the upcoming update, the Shattered Warp Gate update is coming planet side. You get it? It's coming planet side. Yeah, I get that. That's nice. That's a... <laughs> What is that called? It's not a tongue twister. <laughs> Obviously, it's something else, but we like, won't. Whatever. I think it's just like a play on words. I'm not even too play sure. Play on words. There you go. That's uh, what it is. You got it. Good job. But yeah, the upcoming update for Planet Side. Oops, didn't mean to open that here. Uh, the upcoming date for update for Planet Side is inbound, and it's just an absolute rework of the uh, the Esamir map, uh, and the the entire continent is supposed to just. I don't even know how to how to explain. I got pictures that we can look at, but overall, okay. uh, the the quick synopsis that they provide on their website is the massive game update permanently evolves the worn torn battleskips of Planet Side Two through new open world storytelling experiences called campaigns, each designed to deliver multi stage environmental and gameplay changes as players participate in new missions and experience the story unfold. In the first campaign, players will return to the frigid tundras of Esamir to explore and battle across the newly devastation-wrought land. Players will be forced to adapt to this harsh new landscape over multiple chapters as they progress through the story of a catastrophic technological event sparked by the detonation of one of the continent's warp gates, and hence the reason why it's called Shattered Warp Gate. 
Uh, so, so that type of change has been popular, right? Recently, Fortnite, um, Blackout Two did it. Um, you know, changing the map um, in, a, in a unique, unique, unique way. Um, I think it's cool. I think it's good because that's something I wanted. I've wanted a new map for such a long time. And if we're not going to get a new map, then at least map changes could potentially be good. I don't know. We'll have to see. Uh, but I am interested in it. So, yeah. So. Uh, they talk about in their their blog post after the dev reveal happened. Uh, talk about the campaign beginning, uh, and how the kind of how we talked about that. There's this new campaign, and they plan on doing. They, they see uh, kind of like how you were saying. Uh, Fortnite calls it seasons. Uh, they right. also call them chapters. They have like chapter two, season five in Fortnite. Uh, Apex Legend does seasons as well. Uh, Warzone does seasons. They're on season five right now. So I think uh, each campaign is going to be uh, new content brought with differences in the cosmetic design of the maps as well. So uh, SMR has a lot of changes done to it, which are all live right now on the test server. Um, so we're going to have to take a look at that one day. Maybe hop on stream and do that. But the, they're bringing that campaign into the game they're also announcing a new mission system introducing daily quests and challenges to planet side 2 players will have access to a mission board that resets daily offering a diverse collection of new missions with differing rarities difficulties and rewards so really similar to kind of like destiny destiny 2 uh other mmos that you know maybe like a world of warcraft the war right. fr warframe excuse me uh so and then obviously the smu revamp they talk about how the uh Following hints of instability within the power grid beneath the northeastern warp gate, the resulting explosion has left the entire region drastically altered in its wake. So, a lot of differences in the map design. Some bases that were that are currently on the live server right now are covered in snow, and now they're not bases anymore. Uh, so, really using the story to push changes to the map, which some would argue are much needed. Others would say, why are you changing these things? I mean, it all comes down to to, to to gameplay and the flow. It, it could be great, it could be bad. We don't know until we we get our hands on it. And I mean, we can speculate all about about it all we want, but um, it's it's you know some good bases are going away, especially around Ice Attack. Some people don't like the bio labs, you know, being in ruins now. Um, I think that's great because I think every bio lab one out of ten is good, um, and they you know they just soak up pop and kind of becomes a clusterfuck, especially if you only have one spawn there. But um, so I'm I'm actually excited for the changes um i am skeptical though because it's going to be so widely different have you put the map up uh i can put that up right now actually because it's sh it's shrinking the maps drastically um and you know if if, if you know one content is going to be full and i'm assuming you know as long as esmer is there when the update comes out it's going to be full and less space you know you know larger fights potentially so um it's it's interesting to think about in that in that space and i'm curious how that's going to play on live you know um because sometimes large fights aren't the best depending on the basis yeah uh then one more thing that they talk about as well before we kind of i guess analyze the map here is a uh, a storm gathers uh, perhaps one of the most profound changes to the continent is the sudden appearance of a powerful new energy storm the first environmental hazard introduced in planet side 2 so an electrical storm almost the absolute opposite of what a battle royale does usually the storm encompasses the map and makes the map smaller this is if you're inside the circle you're in danger other games that are battle royales is if you're inside the circle you're okay uh but this circle is supposed to follow the larger population fights and uh just start shooting down electricity bolts onto those fights uh and it's whatever the at least via the dev stream the the announcement is that the the fight with the most pop will end up being the fight that the storm goes to so i think this is an interesting addition to the game uh and also something that just kind of needs to be tested to see how it ends up being applied to the game and how it affects gameplay i think probably the dev direction for this is to discourage fights that are oversized like the 96 plus 96 plus and to disperse fights more evenly so that fight quality improves uh so in order to do that discourage the people by shooting electricity bolts at them and and making them die unexpectedly but the problem is like, i mean when you watch on pts they're either gonna have to make it so strong to where everything like not everything dies right away but it's like you know almost too much of a nuisance to be there 
but there's i don't know i just i don't i don't think that's the right answer to it i also don't think in its current format it's that big of a deal um it seems relatively avoidable especially for infantry um and some people in my chat were talking about how this looks to be more about like you know he spamming and a 2 g spamming and kind of like breaking up some of the vehicle spam at, at at really large fights which i think is a good thing i don't think that's necessarily bad um i would just prefer that the storm doesn't tick away your shields as an infantry unless you're you know if you're outside, it takes away your shields. If you're inside, I guess it does in there, saying. But uh, if it's a vehicle focus, then we might as well just not have it affect infantry because I think that's it's just it's going to be too drastic. We don't want that. You don't want to have a large fight, the only fight on the continent, and then the, the thing about Nason's Defiance. We're all at Nason's. Okay, we'll use Isotech plant because I guess that's going to be in, on Esimir. But if we're all there, and then you bring the storm there, and then nobody can play there, it's not like you magically have three new fights that just randomly happen. You know what I mean? There's going to be that, that downtime, which is just not good for the game. So it's concerning it a little bit. Yeah, and uh, we kind of talked about this in the last one. We were talking about map design and map balance. Uh, a bit of a bummer that Isa isn't a neutral base. Um, and I guess the issue yeah. is it's probably not going to be one. Um, because there isn't really a neutral base in the game. But the the fact that Isa Tech Plant is going to be owned by one faction... And that there's going to be this lightning storm. I feel like it's going to make spawning in when it becomes the largest population fight more difficult uh, down the line. Uh, there's also the the hex for isotech plants gotten larger. Uh, and it encompasses the ISA mining operation base that is currently on the live server. So that will not be a base anymore. It's just going to be... All three. Unless uh, they change that, right? On the, uh, on the, on the stream. Yeah, I think... All uh, three. It's, so oh, yeah, it's actually, yeah. Point, and then it's, it's all triple points. It's Watersons, Mathersons, and um, Sarah. Yeah, yeah. So all of the ISIS satellite bases are gone. User left your channel. And the what's resulted here is, you know, it's a lot easier to defend certain bases now that the the connections that each faction has. And I'm not too sure. I'm looking at this closely. I don't see. Is Watersons connected to ISIS tech plant there? I don't think it is. It looks like well, it's only connected to Echo Valley. Like the dotted lines there. So like the way the the lattice looks looks even like smaller. Like there's less connections, but they don't have like the dotted line connections on there. So okay, it should be yeah, there should be more connections than than are showing. Well, yeah, I think this is gonna. In my initial reactions to seeing it, was that a, a lot of the fights are likely gonna be standstill fights just due to the fact that the the satellite bases for isa tech plant now are all three point caps that are very difficult to capture uh yeah. you know watterson's not an easy cap matherson's not an easy cap and saro is not an easy cap either uh so whoever has the tech plant will likely have the majority of the fighting when it comes to defending and they might end up having the majority of the pop too just because people prefer to defend bases than attack bases it's easier to get to the fight that way Right, and I don't know. Yeah, it's concerning, man. I wish it was neutral. I think that's a big change that should be considered at some point if it hasn't already. Yeah, and I'm very the, curious. And this is all obviously in the test stage. Uh, something else to, that's of note is the the bio labs are now uh, destroyed. They're now re re reduced to rubble. Um, Anvari bio lab is now known as Anvari ruins, and then Ymir bio lab is now Ymir ruins. Uh, so they they are. Their vehicle base is similar to kind of like Tapway Station is on live. So they don't even have cat points? Is that what you're telling me? Uh, I think it's just one cat point in the center that's meant to be capped by vehicles. That This is this is a, a hell of a change. That's very interesting. Yeah. So Wow. Go from a powerhouse biolab to a vehicle capture point. Yeah. Very big 180. Uh, the, the Freyer satellite bases are also gone. Freyer M Station's hex mm -hmm. is massive. And overall, the changes are interesting, but aren't conducive to the gameplay style that we prefer, that infantry gameplay. Uh, when you look at the, the edge bases that are on the far reaches of the map, when you look at the far west and the, 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 the furthest north and the furthest east, when you see the battle lines, uh, the, those bases are majority three-point bases. Uh, I'm not too sure what that three-point base is on the bottom right the southeast next to ymir uh but yeah like let's say you're the nc you can attack matherson's triumph you can attack echo valley substation uh you can attack matherson's or I already said matherson's tribe you can attack 
not too sure what that base is going to be called now. Maybe it's going to stay as Amvari Barracks and then whatever that Ymir satellite base is. And if you're attacking what would have been a biolab, it's hmm. going to be a massive vehicle fight that's not going to be very conducive to the game. But if you're running out there in the open, you will get killed either by air to ground or by a tank. So the... <sighs> But yeah, I don't know, man. This is gonna be interesting. This is actually gonna be kind of interesting. Um, I don't know how this is gonna really play out. It's a very different. Um... Wait, is this a new amp station, Boulder amp station? Am I crazy? I believe so. Huh. Interesting. Okay. I mean, I... so tap way station and then Envari ruins. Those are both gonna be vehicle cap capture points. Back to I back. I believe so. So, uh, and I, I brought the cam back to us. Just You're so fine. People... You're fine. That's uh, okay. I mean, we're just gonna have to play. I mean, I guess it's on the test server. That's a questionable change, I guess, to have two vehicle capture points next to each other because I feel like the action there is limited. Sometimes there'll be a fight, but mostly it's just a ghost cap. Um, hmm, okay. I mean, we're just gonna have to play on it and, and, and see how it is. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm not too sure what the balance is like here because there's a lot of other changes that I have here. Uh, there's a new skybox, so the game's gonna look a little bit different. A lot of us play on low settings anyway, so we probably won't right. see much of a change there. Uh, there's abandoned bases, so those are the bases that we were talking about. The What are currently satellite bases are likely just going to be random bases uh, that are well, even only bases, used. I think the northeast and the south are also technically abandoned, right? Yeah, so there yeah. there's bases that are abandoned that will not even really be in play, kind of where the old warp gate uh, is sitting currently on live and will be removed once the new map is, is uh, added to the live server. And then there's also the satellite bases that have been overrun by like snow or destruction. Uh, but something that I'm interested in here is the, uh, the third bullet point that they talk about is disabled vehicles. Disabled during the explosion, derelict vehicles can be found scattered throughout Esamir and with the right tech able to be reclaimed. I don't know what that means. Yeah, so I thought it was going to be like a turret, like essentially just a turret. Like, okay, you have a prowler stuck in the snow, you just hop back, you can like hop in it and then use it. But I don't understand how you would reclaim it and then like what, you, you take the prowler from where it was with the technology and then you can drive it around. You don't get anything else from it. And then what, it's just then it blows up and it's, and it's gone forever and then you gotta wait for Esme to reset or something like it's i mean i guess it's open to interpretation slash testing i'm curious what that means because it, it almost sounds semi kind of cool yeah um and and i'm wondering if this is just why why would you do this when you can just pull a vehicle or is this one of those right you right. cannot pull a vehicle anymore and you have to find a vehicle and this is like their attempt to bring down the vehicle farm numbers so that bases that are because a lot of the bases have also been updated in their design. Uh, like Esamir's tech plant, uh, Isotech plant, is now a three-point. It's not a one-point anymore. Huge, huge L on that. I don't like that at all. T tech plant was, like, my favorite place to go to uh, when I think of, like, the olden days. Uh, yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. I really don't. Uh, but... I, I get it because A-point sometimes is so campable. But... I don't know if that's the excuse to change it like that. I'm cute. Maybe they just want to test it, a three-point tech plant, and this is the way they do it, and maybe it's something that we will eventually like. I don't like vehicle capture points on the outside, but whatever. We'll, we'll see what happens, man. Yeah, and then some other things. Uh, new and modified bases. So after the collapse, Empire scrambled to modify and construct new bases to accommodate the changed environment. Uh, and then there's also the abandoned bases that we already talked about. Uh, new warp gate location. So once the warp gate exploded, now whatever faction was on the northeast is now just centered in the east. Uh, there's a revamped lattice. So the lattice has been reconfigured to conform to the new environment. And lastly, environmental hazard, as we talked before, the electrical storm, storm yeah. that roams the battlefield. Well, maybe um, the new and modified bases will be cool. That's, I mean, hopefully. I mean, there's there's been a couple of those when they've revamped um, some of the maps that, are, that the change has been significant and the bases become really good. So hopefully we can get something like that. Um, but we'll see. I mean, there's, there's a lot of these vehicle capture points now. There's less bases. There's, like they said, like the last has been changed. I feel like it's just going to be harder. Well, there's just fewer bases. So, I mean, there's fewer chances of having a good base. So I'm, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. And Very I, interesting. And regardless of whether it's the best thing ever or the worst thing that's ever happened, it is so refreshing to see movement at all. I, uh, I agree. Hey, I agree. I thought it was one of the best um, um, streams that they've done. They got 3.8k views, which mm -hmm. is more than 2.5 on Escalation. Big um, numbers. 
And again, movement is good. I mean, I'm always scared though of updates because I, I have the gameplay that I have right now. And I know how to avoid a bunch of things and how to play around what's there. And sometimes when you have an update, it can make everything even worse than what you're already dealing with. And then maybe that, that's what pushes me finally to, to leave or something, right? There could be something in there that, that somebody doesn't like and they leave. Or it could be really good. Um, so sometimes I, you know, I have a hard time with updates. This one, I'm not too against. Um, missions, campaigns, all that stuff. Like Sometimes I'm not super pumped up about it. But if the rewards are cool or good, for in your case, you know, it might be something that you want to grind for. Or even in my case, it might be something worth it there that I think is, is exciting. Um, I don't think like, missions are bad for the game. I don't think that's going to do anything to, to drive people away. You might not care about it, but there's new players and, and, and vets that might be excited about that and, and use it for lore or whatnot. So, again, I don't think that's a bad thing. Um, it's really just the map changes and then uh, the storm can be, you know, okay, maybe a little iffy but we'll see. I don't know. Yeah. So, and I don't want to, I guess, go too quickly onto this, but I think something that I do, I do not like is how, and it's, it's a lot, it's a very small percentage. It's like the vocal minority is the, uh, the, the entitled portion of the community that just hates literally any change, but then also complains that there is no change at all. Well, so it's like where yeah. that you can't have, you can't have both sides of that. Uh, so seeing movement extremely refreshing and my hopes are that continuous updates like this campaigns like this will bring someone like me who liked the game back to playing it a lot again and then almost playing it how like people play wow or destiny where they played it like non-stop they got their month or two months in it and then by that third fourth month they're letting the laggards come in and play late uh, enjoy their season and then by that fifth sixth month the new announcement of the next thing comes out and then this, we reset again to month one and then we're on campaign two campaign three and then hopefully yeah, it's not a bad idea that like, people come in for the, for the new campaign they play it they you know experience it some people continue some people and then you know wait for the next campaign and then like you bring back more people and like kind of because i feel like a lot of games are doing that like you're kind of yeah, saying absolutely and that's that's the whole season mentality right, right it's refreshing it keeps you engaged with the game on a either like semi-yearly or yearly basis depending on just the resources that they're able to apply to the game right. and you get experiences kind of like when escalation just came out where there's large amounts of pop, you're enjoying the game, and then you have your time with the game, maybe spent a little bit of money just so that they can, you know, their company, they need to make money too. Uh, spent a little money, got your cosmetic unlocks, had a good time, and then you take a step back, you play it a little more casually just to check in, but that initial grind is no longer there anymore. Uh, so the the fact that we're getting that is it's extremely promising. It's just a matter of execution and community feedback. This isn't on live server yet, it's on the test server, so uh, I've seen some Reddit posts already about, you know, good feedback that has been coming from people, like, you know, I think this is a little unfair, this is this, but there has been that vocal minority that's not only complaining that there is a change in general, that it's like, oh, why, you ruined it, but then there's the same people are also saying they literally add nothing to this game, it sucks. So, yeah, you can't have both. Take um, your, but you're gonna have haters, man. It's, it is. What you're gonna it is. have haters, and it's that's why I said it's the so vocal minority. Wrong. I think right, overall right. the majority of people are excited. They're checking it out. They're logging in the test server. They're downloading it. They're taking a gander. The, a lot of people are going on to to the Reddit, going to the R slash Planet side, saying like, "Hey, I saw this." People are upvoting, downvoting. It's constructive feedback, and I think that's good. And that's exactly what this platform for us is as well. Just giving good feedback, taking a look, and. Hopefully, uh, next podcast will actually have a chance because it just got uploaded to Test Server today. So, Aflick and I haven't had a chance, haven't had a chance to log in and uh, test out the the new bases. And there obviously isn't much fighting either. So, we're gonna hopefully have updates when we come back in the in the next week or two when we do the next episode of the podcast. But uh, moving, I, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Are you gonna? What are you about to say? I was gonna, gonna move stand? on to the to the campaign part. Okay, do you think? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, so moving on to the campaign, uh, they also announced the mission systems and the the new examples of missions. So they have transport pilot, which is ferry passengers to combat areas, frontline spawns, which deploy Sundays on the front line, cordium run, harvest and deposit cordium and allied silos, protection protocol, uh, defend your allies with the def defector's seraf shield. Not sure what that is. Uh, soldier and Shepherd capture bases and earn experience leading a squad and platoon. Bounty Hunter, kill a bounty target. Message Counter, 
deliver communications intel from base to base in a harasser, mining for Elysium, defend an orbital mining drill while it harvests, and lastly, transport Stormbound, a campaign-themed version of the transport pilot mission that sends you into the storm on Esimir. So the, hmm. these, are, these are examples of the missions that they're adding that you would do during the campaign to progress the story, get the cosmetics that they're adding, uh, and, and just get your experience, your ISO 4, your A7, all, all of that. So just from that, what are your thoughts on the, on the examples of the missions that they've provided so far? Okay, you know how I felt about the implant that came out, uh, Firestorm, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's like, hey, you need to get vehicle assist kills, or to get this infantry only implant, you need to play as a max. And I was like, what? I don't. I it, I play infantry. It's an infantry implant. Let me do infantry things. So I like this because you can choose a couple of them, right? And then they reset every twenty four hours or something like that. Um, I like that these are just natural, normal things that people are doing in the game. Like mm -hmm. I could kill five people, and one of those is a bounty target. I'm going. It's not like I'm going to all of a sudden kill this guy because I have this mission. I was going to attempt to kill him anyway because he's trying to kill me. And so it's it, nice for like new players or something like that to get a little bit more certs doing things that they're already going to do. Okay, maybe it's not like a thousand um, XP minutes, two certs, four certs, something like that, but that's still something that is extra on top of it. So I like that idea. It's not having you do something outside of your play style, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, you want to encourage more Sunders being pulled in place at, at, at fights? Boom, you've done it right here. Um, and, it, and it encourages new players or, or anyone to really do that. Now, maybe you don't want to hop in a harasser and drive around the map. You don't have to pick that one, right? Mm -hmm. I like that idea of it. It's just natural, simple things. And that's what I've been saying for a long time. Just add simple things. This mission system, is not. no one's going to be mad about it. No one's going to be like, well, that's game-breaking. For me to do this or to do a mission, I have to do something I don't want to do. Not really. Yeah. So I like that. I think it's not a bad thing at all. I think it's good. And I think it covers every uh, like meta in the game. Yeah. It, there's vehicle stuff. There's map just map awareness map leadership type stuff there's infantry on infantry objectives in here there's air to air air to ground as much as i hate to say air to ground but there's air to yeah, ground the, the drill. <laughs> uh, we'll see if, don't pull, don't do the drill one boys unless you want to get shat on by frogface yeah so there there's they've covered all of their of their bases here um yeah. every no single button. every single version of the game that there is for every single type of person is covered in this and I'm assuming once it gets more fleshed out and there's more stuff for an infantry on infantry person to do, there's it will hopefully even be like trees or avenues of how to complete your campaign. It's like, oh, I'm an infantry person, so I'm going to stick to this infantry tree, which is like get 50 headshots, kill a bounty target, get 100 kills this session. Uh, I don't know, like use this gun to do something, uh, just stuff like that. Like those are challenges that would match like my gameplay style. And then hopefully as well well as that is meaningful rewards once you get the objective finished right 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 exactly um a lot of it though seems iso or xp based um you know aka certs it, i mean it's kind of like directives i guess it's just a different format uh, essentially but i like that they're keeping it simple and you know like you said like for you to get the heavy assault armor it's like hey get air deterrence ribbons you're like eh, i don't want to do that <laughs> this one's like okay i just killed a bounty target or I'll take the bounty target one because I know that I'm going to fight infantry and the chance of me killing the bounty target is high, right? Mm -hmm. For me to run into that in that type of gameplay. So I, I like that they're keeping it simple. Hopefully they build upon it more. Um, and I, I don't mind that if they start small and it w doesn't work out or it fails, whatever, people don't really like it for whatever reason, they can just leave it how it is or scrap it and not lose that much. Instead of adding like 400 things, and it's like, oh, okay, that's not going to work. Let's scrap it. And it's like, well, that's a lot of wasted time. So mm -hmm. I feel like in a way, I don't agree with everything that's on this list, like the storm and whatnot, but in a way they are saving resources. And I think being semi-smart about some things and, and, and doing things that are simple and small, and then they can build upon it as they go. So that's mm -hmm. my thought on it. Yeah. And overall, it's it's one of those, we, we, have, we have started, and this is where we are at right now. It is on the test server. Check it out. And then we're going to make things more more fleshed out and better as we go so i think this is an okay start giving people a right. a, a daily objective along with their long-term objectives of like directives and dang son he asked for it sir bro you can't do that he has to redeem his channel points for that bro you're messing with the the economy the chat you're economy. right i messed up i messed up all right man we'll let this one slide but yeah i think it's it's good it's it's not it's not bad it's cool to have something like this added 
but the more the more we go down this path the more things need to improve when it comes to reward and tasks uh because right now it's very basic you gotta tread very lightly here because i don't think as a new player it's not such a big deal what i'm about to say here but as a vet i've gone through all the helmets okay Mm -hmm. I, i i need something new and something that is very different very cool um, for it to be worth it, mm-hmm. um, new armors, whatever that could be, uh, you, the, the rewards do need to be powerful, essentially exciting. You can't just tap into what we already have. You want to mm-hmm. do that on a small scale early on, fine. But as we get deeper into it, the rewards need to be new and they need to be cool. Like nobody wants to play WoW and get like the armor that's been out for ten years. Mm-hmm. Definitely. They, no, I want the new cool armor so I can flex on people. And, um, you know, I don't know if you should necessarily be able to, I don't think you should be able to buy these things um, because that takes away some of the um, coolness of it. It's like, oh, you oh you look at your skin, you know, cool. Well, I'm glad you bought that. We have skins that you can buy, and there should be stuff that you get um, through challenges, missions, campaigns, or whatever it is um, that is unique and different to uh, whatever you can buy with Daybreak Cash because um, that makes it special, man. It makes yeah. it unique, and it makes it worth grinding for. Yeah, and I think right now the game's probably on like a ninety-five percent of cosmetics are purchasable, and then five percent. They, they need money, so I well, understand yeah. that. And then five percent of the in-game cosmetics are earnable. So those are like the directive armors, the camos. Uh, but my biggest, the thing that was the biggest surprise to me when I came back after five years, uh, quitting in twenty fifteen and then coming back in twenty twenty, was there were only three new directives. I'm pretty sure at least there were only three new directives. The one for the cold or the gold weapon camo skin, the one for the I call it the Ghost of Tsushima helmet, it looks like the samurai <laughs> one, and yeah. then the one for brilliant camo. Uh and then the, you know they add like the seasonal ones, but the I'm not talking about seasonal, I'm talking about meaningful ones that are like grinds and you get a a permanent reward that's like a flex. So like you know brilliant camo is like the flex of the game right now. Uh but the fact that only three things three things came out over the course of five years absolutely blew my mind. Because when I played, what kept me playing was grinding directives. Like I got okay. my light assault armor, got my beetle juice. Like I got all the stuff that I wanted to like grind out for. But them not adding that really threw me off because that's what I felt like the game is for most people that stay. It's like it's the late game. It's the end game of the game. Like, outside of getting BR100 yeah. and unlocking all your stuff with your certs, the end game is directives. Uh, you so, come back after five years thinking, damn, there's going to be hell of shit. Yeah, and then, and then there's three. Yeah. Uh, so oh, dude, they went ghost when you were gone. Like, there was a moment where I don't, I thought the devs were, like, dead or, or like, I don't know what happened. Like, there's, like, one, all the devs were on one plane or something and it went down and we just didn't know. Um <laughs> Like no, I'm mean, telling. Like there was radio silence for like everything. I'm everything was dead. I was like, "Fuck it, this is it, bro." You know, this is this is it. We're gonna grind out for this weapon. We're gonna just get. You know, it was, I don't know if it was going for two hundred thousand, a hundred thousand, but this is way back in the day. I was like, "No, we're just gonna play for as long as we can." And the pop was like smaller and smaller and smaller. Like the continent wouldn't even open up. It was just like the narrow warp gates. You know, the unstable warp gates. Mm-hmm. And it was TI allies. You know, every day. Um, those are rough times. And then the devs came out of. Uh, Wherever the they were hiding, yeah. the woodwork, the the burrow, whatever, and and now we're now we're getting content, and I'm happy about it. Yeah, I'm happy about it. Yeah, and I think again that kind of goes back to that, like you know, complaining that we don't get anything, and then when we do get something, complaining that the thing sucks. It's like it's just entitled, and you know, there needs to be some sort of positive feedback. I think a really good person for that that showcases that they can not only make fun of the game and you know poke fun at the game and. But also give really good feedback. I think Slendy gives really good feedback. I, I saw him in uh, Rel's chat when Rel was doing his... Uh, he was doing like a, a, a level designer stream on Saturday during like the... During midday. It was around like 4... 3, 4 p.m. Eastern. And, uh, you know, Slendy was just like giving like pretty good feedback. Like just in the chat. And I could see Rel was like reading it and stuff. So... Y- more people that start kind of having a mixture of that thing where I personally love making fun of the game because it's such a meme of a game. 
And like I, I feel, I feel it's like it's almost like a close friend when you make fun of it. It's like, bro, what are you wearing? Like when you see your friend with garbage shoes, you're like, what are those, bro? True. So it's true. like it's it's it like that. A it's a mm-hmm. mix. Yeah, you know that's a good point about Sunday. You know, he was one of the few people in the Discord, and he was like, you know what? Uh, reading the changes, I'm 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 optimistic about it. And I was like, okay, Sunday, I see you, man. Appreciate it. Um, and he's knowledgeable. You now it might be infantry, but he kind of does everything he can. So he's a good person that that instead of memeing 100 percent of the time can provide good strong feedback and i feel like that's important especially like Rel doesn't ever stream by himself right you know the devs like it's it's something that if you get shit on too much you got to be careful because you're just going to push people away mm-hmm. um so it's nice that sunday did that it's, it's important i think um to provide constructive feedback and it's nice as like somebody like Rel or anyone else to to get that right not just getting shit on the entire time because then it's like why why even do it you know it's not fun anymore than it is just a job and if you don't have passion you can you know things it uh, i mean you don't get good updates in my opinion but yeah so just that's something just to keep in mind as like the community when you're approaching uh something you 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 don't like uh, i think a lot of times people structure the way they say things about the game in this this shroud of i want to see it fail but then they're the same people that are playing on live every day, are really active in the Jaeger community, are uh, have been playing since like beta. It's like I, it can't. I don't understand like how. It, and it's an entitled thing again, where it's like I've been playing for so long and I love the thing, but it doesn't feel as good anymore. So I'm just gonna be really negative about it. And uh, I've been there. I feel like you've probably been there too. Like it's something mm-hmm. we deal with. But uh, the way you project that is really important. Uh, Because otherwise, you're just going to be ignored in the future when you actually have a decent argument that you want to communicate. It's either the developer or just somebody you're talking to in in TeamSpeak or Discord, etc. And, you know, having that rapport is pretty important. It's not just, I have good ideas, listen to me. It's like, you know, I've, I've... I feel like I've given good feedback about the game. And I'm I'm a very funny person to hear this from because when I played the game back in like 2014, 2015, I was known as like the memer, screaming in prox chat, this game's mm-hmm. dog shit, just like being stupid like that. Um, but I don't know. Recently, I've just felt like, you know, we've grown. We're grown yeah. men. <laughs> True. So- <laughs> Families. Uh, you know, careers, graduated college, all that, man. Um, that's a good point. Um when the DM is dead, if ever, you know, once it eventually dies at some point, you know, um, yeah, sure, then we can go in on it. But if it's still here, we might as well attempt to fix it or mm-hmm. put it, you know, have hope for it, right? Uh, because, like, at least me, I still play it. Other people still play it. Or the people come back monthly or six months, whatever. It's like, you know, we're still hopeful, you know? Um, so, yeah, we need to, to, to support, not necessarily monetarily, but, you know, we need to support in some way or or – um some people do it's nice to have some people supporting it that mm-hmm. are in the vet community and you do have that but you know um so like you said sunny that's a good example and, and shout out to him for 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 doing that yeah so before you shit on the game always say what would slendy do <laughs> what would slendy do uh but <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be a meme <laughs> uh so other things okay. there's uh they're changing some stuff to indar uh the center three bases are all getting changes to them to improve the flow uh that's there's gonna be some changes to the sanctuary huge. yeah pretty on, big bro. Oh, here, when we go back, so the crown has received changes to capture point placement. Uh, The B point can now be reached from both the north, south, and eastern sides of the base. they opened it up. Yeah, they they opened opened it up. up. It's not Uh, not like a cluster bug down there anymore. I mean, it still will be because it's inside, but it's it's way wider and there's not as much cover down there. So it should help flow in the fight down there a little bit so it's not so mm -hmm. clustery. Series hydroponics. Oh, yeah, we'll get to TI. Uh, Series hydroponics has received some adjustments to reduce prop... Prop density? Oh yeah, so they're bringing down like the amount of trees there. Uh, they adjusted sight lines, and the hill to TI alloys has received some new paths around the eastern side for the people that are attacking there. And then lastly, TI alloys has received reductions in its defensive capabilities, and the rock ridge connecting it to the crown has been destroyed. So, All I'm saying, dude, is they were going to put the bridge on the south side. Essentially, they're going to take down the rock ridge and they're going to put it there. And all I'm saying is I'm not saying they listen to me, but I am saying they listen to me because I said all they need to do is actually just get rid of the rock bridge. And then the north side Sunday can go where that Sunday on the rock bridge was going before. And now Crown can go down to the south. And then you have a nice triangle. Mm-hmm. So it's, it should improve the fight for all for, for, for the north side. It's still going to be a bit of a clusterfuck of a fight, but I don't mind it when you are you know you own the base – or you're attacking from the Rockbridge side, or even from the south. So it should it should 
create better fight flow for all three. It just sucks when you got that north side series spawn and you drive up there and you're just running up that hill. Mm -hmm. Getting shat on, bro. It's oh, a, man, it's a it yikes. Rough. I also think they added a, a new wall in the middle of the building in TI yes. Alloys. Yes, yes, That yes, one's yes, really yes. big, too, for for attacking. Uh, I'm not sure how I feel about it, but I, I do think it would it will help, though, because it minimizes the, the, the sight line coming from... There's a uh, super big sight line from spawn, yeah, yeah. basically all the way to the opposite wall of the, the capture point there. So literally, like, anybody that's standing there, uh, like an NG turret anywhere in that doorway sure, sight line yeah. is instantly dead. Uh, and I know we, me and you don't necessarily like engineer turrets, but that's like the, it shouldn't be to the point where I put an engineer turret anywhere near this door to like have any angle of it, and like info can just blast me with a sniper from spawn. Okay, look, I don't mind. I, I actually, I don't. There are I, many clips of you murdering engineers. I've spammed the sad face when you do it too. I don't want my team. Yeah, they're on your team too, bro. Okay, when well, they're in the back <laughs> of the room and they're shooting the door that you know the doorway that you're trying to funnel 400 players through because that's what the doors are designed to do in planet side um and you're shooting us in the back like i have to protect the rest of the guys up there the boys and i have to murder that dude very rarely um no but the, this is the hitbox i don't like engineer turrets because of the hitbox mm -hmm. i think they're fine i think they're very effective um if you fix the hit hitbox i don't have an issue with them yeah the um, hitbox is pretty good i don't i think they're good i think engineers are, are good in a good place in the game it's mm -hmm. a sport class but the turret is actually super strong but a little bit too strong because the hitbox and then when you put a turret on like the stairs in the powerhouse and you put your little um what was that wall called the little baby gate wall thing yeah i just call it a baby gate it just it's some and you put like two maxes up there with some engineer it just becomes like a very and you put the deployable for the grenades it becomes a very like impossible position to push and sometimes that gets a little annoying but that's different that's not just the engineer trip i like engineers so don't don't be don't be coming at me crazy bro <laughs> yeah so uh i think that that wall hopefully will, will help with the flow and all these changes are i think they're good changes that that center of indar has always been a pretty big meat grinder and uh improving the flow of that area is a good start to making indar less uh uh, of a meme at this point because people see indar unlock and they're like i'm gonna log off but then a lot of people see yeah. indar and they're like hop get in the tanks load up the prowler steven like i don't know something like that and, uh, well for a lot of players like myself um i don't really play trvs so if i get that north side spawn i'm i'm and that's the only fight i stay there and i just grind it out for as long as I can. Mm -hmm. You know, Leroy's like, okay, I'll go VS because VS owns it, or I'll go TR because TR owns it, and I won't have to have a, a bad fight. Or, you know, they can go the side that has the rock bridge. Now, it's like, it doesn't matter what side you're on. You should have a, a decent chance of fighting at that base. And my thing is that that base, I feel like, has 90% of the fights. Yeah. It's got to be the number one base for fights now, yeah. of all time. Yeah, the, that base is just... When I came back... I think I fought there the majority of the time ever since I got back. And this is this is after what you were talking about where it was just the three lanes, the game was dead. It was only like this is this is post escalation and like I feel like I still fought there like I just a fuck I on. swear to god there's a time like I think there's been multiple times I've logged in like Esmer will, will like um lock and we'll go to Hassan. Mm -hmm. And like I swear to god it will lock it will lock like this like so fast and then we'll go to Amherst and it will lock we'll go to Indar and it won't get locked, bro. It just stays. It's like forever, and we're just grinding at ti, 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 and then like eventually like lock, and then we'll like we'll just we go through the other continents so fast sometimes. At least this is a while ago, and then we'll be right back to Indar, right back to ti allies, bro. It was oh, some dangerous times back in the day. Yeah, man. So I think these changes are hopefully going to result in just better flow in the center, and hopefully yeah. we see more optimization changes like this in the center, but to the rest of the the lattice lanes. Um, also, there's a bunch of sanctuary changes. Uh, they're just kind of fixing up stuff. I think prepping it for this new campaign. Uh, but something that is pretty big, but kind of slipped under the radar that I'm just finding out about now is the... So one, all exceptional implants can now be crafted for an ISO 4 cost from the crafting screen. So no I more... Like 25,000 or something. They're not cheap, but yeah. it's 45. So it's it's a grind, and adding this campaign is pretty good because now you can not only get it from alerts, but you'll also be able to get it from campaigns and missions. But Firestorm, so it's been added to the drop table. 
The actual crafting cost has been brought down because it's not uh, the summer directive anymore. The recoil and cone of fire bloom penalty are now reduced from 200% to 100%. And the horizontal recoil tolerance that was uncapped before no longer does that anymore. What was it before, though? Like, So I know that they, it, it got released, it was here, and then they kind of nerfed it. So it had. I don't think it had any recoil or cone of fire bloom penalty. I think it was just a 0%. It was your base gun. It literally just made your gun shoot faster. Uh, but then they made an update that made it 200% penalty to both of those. So now that's brought down to 100%. But the biggest thing was the, the, the uncapped horizontal recoil tolerance where your gun could literally just go wherever the fuck it wants. Um, so it's still going to be, it's still going to be questionable whether it's a a meta implant, whether it's going to be on the useful side or if it's going to be on the, let's not use that side. But this is. I think a good middle ground between yeah. just fire rate increase and nothing, no, like literally no trade off, and <laughs> yeah. the absolute just garbage that it was before. It was like two hundred percent uncapped horizontal recoil tolerance. Like that, that was insane. This uh, gives me a little hope because they they did they nerfed it very quickly and they they did give it a very yeah. huge nerf hammer. But this is a relatively quick turnaround. Yeah. Or, yeah, turnaround. Bring back to it. So I mean, uh, this again, this makes me hopeful. This is not the Zoe Max six months. You know, leave it there and let people suffer uh, that we saw before. So this is hopeful. It's been ho- hopeful in the devs a little bit. Nice. Very yeah. cool. And then last but not least, uh, there's five new player studio items. There's the Old War Heavy Assault Armor and Helmet for the Terran Republic by Doku. There's the Armadillo Sunderer Exterior Bumper and Tires for All Factions by Stevio. Uh, the Challenger Vanguard Exterior Plating by Lobstrex. The Response Infiltrator Armor by Binary Coder and the Raven Shroud Helmet by Count Polly. So my hope, good for them, man. yeah, good. And shout out to these to the people still doing stuff for Player Studio. That's the fact that you know they're still making stuff for the game. They're still, uh, you know, they're they're applying their talent and their passion towards the game. Uh, you know, blows my mind. I've been seeing a Binary Coder and Doku's name for years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So my. <laughs> My hope is that this list gets longer, though, and that it's not just player studio. It's also developer-made stuff, and we start to get more stuff that's either purchasable, um, and they could do, like, a season pass sort of thing where you you know, you know you buy into unlocking this stuff so that they can not only make revenue, but we have something to grind for. Uh, right, right. So, you know, j- just some more cosmetics to, to entice the player to want to go through the journey and feel like they were rewarded with something. Um but that's kind of it. A lot of big changes. Uh, just to recap real quick, Shattered Warp Gate update. We're seeing campaigns, missions. Esimir has been changed up. A lot of new shorter daily objectives to do to to supplement daily, weekly, and uh, I, I guess monthly too gameplay. Uh, they they kind of go, they range from rarity and length. Uh, some changes to Indar, changes to the Sanctuary, uh, implant changes, and then... Oh, the render distance. Uh, oh yeah, and then there is the render distance, but I've some people have been telling me that it's scuffed. I can open that up here. I think I have a, a screenshot that I took earlier. Oh, scuffed, really? I mean, I'm I'm excited for the quality of life change. It would be nice to when I fly, you know, at 500 render distance, it's just a big white, bright light when I'm streaming. It looks absolutely stupid. It's probably confusing when people come to the stream. So it'd be nice to have a, that minor change and just to be able to see see things and when i get out of it boom it resets the infantry i could i could see that being a problem though obviously going back and forth like that and mm-hmm. the game's struggling with it for sure yeah so overall just some really good changes um the, some stuff to look forward to obviously there is disconnect in the player base right now just because drastic change like this for a community that's seen the game be so stagnant for so long uh you know, when I, I took an organizational behavior class that talked about how, well, when businesses bring drastic changes to their workplace, the workforce and the employees, uh, they, they kind of have resistance to change. And I almost can see that similarly here where you're bringing a lot of changes to something that people have been used to for years and years and years. Yeah. Uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, Esmir has been in the map or excuse me, been in the game since the game launched, correct? Oh, I want to say yeah, man. I, 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 yeah, I think so. I, uh, yeah, I know Ender has. I'm assuming Esmer has as well. Yeah, I, can't I think over time it hasn't. Hassan was the only non-launch continent, so um, you know, people have been playing on this map for 
eight years <laughs> so now it's just gonna change i i, ex I can almost expect yeah. and i'm assuming maybe the devs expected too that some people would they re i mean they revamped the maps they you revamped know, they them but i don't not to this them. extreme this is like I mean, a complete is, turnaround yeah. of a map this is very different but i mean dude they changed like i think amorous overhaul was maybe that was large that was like almost every base was, was different i feel like mm -hmm. it was it was actually overwhelming when it first came out because we didn't know where to go we didn't know how to play the bases um, it was very interesting when it when it, when it dropped um so this is at least we have some history it wasn't like esmer has never been changed before but i do i do understand what you're saying true uh but that that kind of kind of leaves us to moving on another oh. transition slide i remember watching derringer's podcast Every time he would be done with something, the, the the thing would transition. You hear the music and stuff like that. Uh, we we just chilling, but this is the this is a Aflix Shocker podcast. First, we're not talking about Planetside for one of our main subjects. That's true. Our viewer base, our viewership just dropped to zero, bro. Did you see that? <laughs> <laughs> Dude. They're like, shut it down. We don't want to hear it anymore, bro. I am so excited. I am extremely excited. What's going on, bro? Talk to New me. NVIDIA announcements. Hey, they're not fucking around, bro. They, said, Look. they are not messing around, bro. There are so many new things coming out. I am beyond excited for this. Like, if I was, if I was this excited for, for the planet side changes... I am True. this excited for what's about to happen. Because I love building computers. I love following PC tech stuff. My if my music and my streaming and all my other passions or whatever don't hit, like my long term goal is to work for somebody that does like, you know, marketing and PC gaming type stuff, you know, being that guy that's like, you know, HyperX, I don't know, like something like that. It'd be fun. But whenever sure. I see one of the heavy hitters, the the I would call them the leader of the market when it mm -hmm. comes to they they almost have a monopoly on on graphics. Uh, when it comes to graphics processing on in PCs, AMD has a really good market share when it comes to consoles. I think both the Xbox and the PlayStations use AMD uh, APUs, but when it comes to PC GPUs, everyone, I guarantee you, everyone in chat has like an NVIDIA card, and like a, a minority of them have an AMD card. Well, wasn't AMD kind of like hyping up their their up and coming? I and think now, so. But... Everyone's like, oh, like they're gonna finally start giving NVIDIA a run for their money, but. I, I don't know, boss. So in their in AMD's battle to become the front runner in both the CPU and GPU market, their battle in the CPU market has been really fruitful. It's oh, been yeah. they have been they have been killing it. the The prices are better. The performance is about is I think about now getting better than uh, in Intel, but the 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 GPU marketplace is still I think predominantly just absolutely. In the in the lead is Nvidia and AMD well, this, is still this running behind. Just made that apparent because I feel like Intel came out with the um um I don't I don't I'm gonna say ten series for lack of a better word and that was kind of like meh and then AMD was able to kind of like you said really kind of close the gap almost like the rabbit and the turtle right you know I feel like Intel been a little lazy man or the, you know they're just not. Mm -hmm. there yet with what, what their new tech i don't know i haven't i haven't gotten i haven't really dived into it too deep because it was always intel was like there's no point even even worrying about it and now it's a little bit different but i feel like with this new release with nvidia they're 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 stepping the game up a little bit it's an actual so they're just dropping something that's useless it's like oh well here the changes are like this and then amd mm -hmm. comes out with their thing and it's better or close no i think um nvidia is not messing around so yeah. they're respecting the game yeah i think the biggest thing that I was a disadvantage to Nvidia in the last generation the 20 series was the the RTX on meme the you know they hyped up ray tracing but then they also were kind of talking about like but you might need NVLink it's like the new SLI thing where you you have like four graphics cards in your computer and they're all running yeah, your in computer's tandem. not the size of your house you can't yeah use. so uh you know RTX on was like a super big meme especially when they added ray tracing to Minecraft that was one of, I think, the worst marketing moves where you're trying to hype up something that's known as, like, cutting-edge tech for, like, high-end uh, enthusiast-level PC gamers. And you're like, and it's in Minecraft, baby! And you're like, who, the, who who is an enthusiast playing Minecraft? Uh, so, they, uh, they... <laughs> 
<laughs> they talked about that and that was such a meme but now there's gonna be meaningful and not meaningful but accelerated and impactful additions not additions what am i trying to say here i'm trying to say that the the increase kind of like how you said isn't as marginal anymore it's not like from here to here it's like from here to we're doubling your frame rates and uh i'll start showcasing kind of what they were showing off uh in in their uh what's it called the i forget what the was it was it live i don't even think it was live but it was just their 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 little event that they had on twitch and youtube uh, there's a bunch of marketing content, and there's also just general, general. Uh, what what is it called? Oh no, I messed it up. There there's like a bunch of different uh, like s slides that they've shown as well. I'll kind of stop it on the. Bro, this thing is humongous. Oh my lord. I Damn, you just went through. I think you just went through the whole thing, bro. Yeah, I'm trying to get to the to the generational it's an leap. Thing. Thing. Doctor first, okay, relax. Yeah, yeah, we're talking about other stuff. It, it's hard, but. The, the 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 biggest announcement is the 3070 and if we explain this real quick what the graph is showing here is uh the the left side is relative performance so the 980 is the worst card here and i remember when the 980 came out that was my first graphics card uh that was like the cutting edge cutting edge but uh the 980 is like the the worst graphics card in this and it shows the relative performance from there. So the 980 is 1x, and the 3080 is uh, almost four to five times better than that. So that's what they're showcasing here. And then the bottom, the x-axis, is showing the pricing relative to that. So the 3070 releasing for $499 is marketed for now as being faster than the 2080 Ti. And as somebody who owns a 2080 ti i'd like you to explain uh your I, thoughts I right now 2080 relax okay I'm not, gonna, right. I'm not making that much money off, off of streaming okay chill okay um i just have a, i just have the normie one so I, is it, it, would that be the 2080 super i don't even know if that's a thing i just don't have a 2080 okay um but it's done me well man i'm happy with it i'm content I didn't, you know i think it, i don't know how much it was when i got it maybe it was only six or seven maybe it was 800 i can't remember but um i needed a new gpu so um to play play on set in potato settings of course um but i'm, I'm content with the 2080 right now uh, you know I, I i i'm i'm as long as it can handle um the cyberpunk 2077 i'm, I'm content if not then i'm gonna have to upgrade bro but even if I upgrade, look at the prices. Like you can't even be upset. It's like I could probably still like I don't. Oh, dude, I don't even know if I could sell it. I mean, I could. It's just the price is gonna drop way off. Alcons was one of the people that has agreed with me in the in the sentiment that uh, like the 2080 Ti, the 2080, the 1080 Ti, those graphics cards are going to turn to almost like paperweights, just because of the fact that the 3070 is that much better allegedly i'm gonna keep saying allegedly here because uh someone someone in chat really just said like we won't know how good they are till we start getting benchmarks on them which is 100 percent true Very so true. i'm gonna keep saying allegedly and we'll we'll preface all of our arguments here with they have not come out yet uh they come out end of september early october all three of the graphics cards are coming out in segmented releases so we're not too sure of what's gonna happen here but if we take what they're saying, it's promising. yeah, it's it's promising, and it almost it's one of those huge generational leaps that ruins the previous generation. That argument of uh, I'm just gonna buy the last generation of of hardware just for cheaper is almost completely out the door because of how good of a what's the word of a value proposition that the the budget model is here with the 3070. It's just exciting in the, in the, really because of the money. Like you're you're getting so. It's not. I don't even want to say it's the best bang for your buck. I mean it is, but you're getting so much more than you normally would, which is, I think, making PC more affordable for everyone, like getting more people into it. And because a lot of people are like, I don't want to spend three, three, two, three, four thousand dollars on a new PC, but I also want to spend a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars, and and not feel like I'm in the game, you know, if I don't know what I'm doing. Essentially, you know, obviously people that can buy you know parts um can affect can make an effective pc is what i'm trying to say you know if you're not overclocking stuff you don't know what you're doing but um it's just nice to see something more affordable but still 
with great performance. Yeah. And that's not it's not I'm not saying it's hundred and twenty dollars, but it's you know, it's it's a nice it's a nice change up, man. Yeah, a hundred percent surprise. And, sure. and building a computer that's extremely strong and can kill all these these games that are gonna be coming out the price in order to do that. One of the biggest things that impressed me are the benchmarks that they're showcasing with the 3070 are all max settings on 1440p. And it's getting 60 oh, plus. Shit. Borderlands, I think, let me check my notes here. Uh, uh, the 3070 is reported to average 82 FPS in Borderlands 3 running the game on ultra settings at 1440p. Those numbers are flagship numbers. If you went back a generation or two, but this is the budget card. This is the one that's five hundred dollars. So building like sick. a really good computer just dropped in price exponentially, just due to the fact that this is the budget model. It's only five hundred dollars, and usually the graphics card is the most expensive part that you spend the most money on in your PC. It's your GPU and your CPU. So you just brought down the pricing. And I believe the 2080 Ti dropped for twelve hundred dollars. So, yeah, that's that's a lot. So you buy two 3070s and then take your girl for a really nice dinner. <laughs> Do we know why the it's a 3070? That's a four or five hundred, right? Uh, Do we yeah. Know why? What drove the price down on that? Is it so the 2070 it was always the five hundred dollar price point. So the 3070 oh, okay. is the but same then... price point. It's just that the performance is way better. We're, we haven't even t- we haven't even touched on the 3080 and the 3090. The 3080 you don't is have to. Yeah, the, you could just get a 3070 and be good to go for the next five six years. Uh, but uh, the 3070 starts at 5, 499. The 3080 starts at 699, and then the, that massive hunk of metal, the 3090, starts at fifteen hundred dollars. Oh, holding it. Uh, I don't, bro. He's like this. He's just. He literally he takes it out of the oven, bro. He whips it out, and he's just like, "This is the." This is my work keyboard chat. This relax. is the th- this is the thirty ninety. Good luck fitting it in your computer. <laughs> he's like trying to put it. In. He's like, oh, um. It's funny. I've never seen a graphics card that's needed like, uh, what's it called, uh, a a a guide of like this is how much space you will need dimensions wise of like inches and centimeters in order to fit into your computer and i look at my computer and i think it'll fit because my current graphics card is one of those really thick two slots that could almost be a three slot so i think it would fit in my computer but you don't put that in the right way it'll just snap the pci part or the express lane Bro, on your motherboard completely off a lot of caseless computers out there coming up very soon <laughs> yeah so really exciting stuff uh, and, you know, social media, I don't know if you saw any of this stuff, but, like, on Twitter, on Reddit, people in Discord. I'm not a complete boomer, bro, but go ahead. Well, I know you didn't see it on Twitter. That's why I'm saying it was also on, like, Reddit and, uh, and Discord. But the amount of memes that came out for, like, I have a story of a friend of mine. She really wanted to build a computer. So she built a computer last Friday. And she put a 2070 in it. And she bought that 2070 for $500. And now the 3070 is coming out in a month and has turned her graphics card into an actual paperweight why did she wait i don't know and i told her you know because i didn't know that there was an nvidia release uh even that's happening fair. that's fair that's fair i so just she definitely didn't know that probably yeah, obviously she bought I, it so yeah i don't think she knew but uh i, I just said the like, guy that was like yeah sure come on let's <laughs> get this one off the shelf but that's the thing about tech in general i was talking about this yeah, on on my stream i think yesterday or the day before it's why are you buying new tech at this time of the year everybody knows september october november new games new phones new hardware bunch of new tech comes out at this time so it's a really bad time to buy something that dropped last year or in this case the 2070 came out i think two years ago so it's like that that's a bit of a yikes so people memeing the amount of people that like bought a 2080 Ti last week and they're like, I'm going to have to go return this now. NVIDIA just destroyed the market. And the store is like closed permanently. <laughs> <laughs> they just, they stopped re- accepting returns. Um, sorry. No, no, sorry. So, and then there's a bunch of other new things. So, you know, RTX is going to be better. I also talked about NVIDIA Reflex. It lowers latency, supports higher refresh rate monitors. So we're going to start seeing 360 hertz monitors out on the market. And I think having a really strong graphics card to that they're announcing as well 
in line with it will will make them sell honestly even though i don't personally think 360 hertz is needed at all i'm a big 165 144 hertz fan uh having a graphics card that can run the games at that speed and get that many frames is good uh and then they also talked about improved gpu encoding which is really big for me and you as streamers uh so streaming to Twitch oh, with yeah. OBS, they're they're accelerating these apps to better work with the 30 series. Uh, so uh, they they estimate that streamers like me and you should expect a 35 percent boost in FPS, That's huge, and improved quality. Because so, when I'm streaming to Warzone, I I drop like 40 frames. I was like, oh, maybe yeah. I don't stream. But okay, so fact, <laughs> what a name. Um, in regards to okay, so I do think 360 hertz is overkill, um, but that's what they said about 280 and then 240 and then 144, and that's what they always say about tech. It's it's is it's too much. It's too 4K TVs. You don't need a 4K. It's just that's just what happens. And I do think it's still 360 is crazy. But until we get our hands on it and you can test it and you can feel or see a difference, I mean, you just won't know. Um, I, I've never understood that people are not you fact, but people have always been a little. I mean, I guess it's changed, but resistant to things like that. Like 360 hertz, if it you know if it has the rest of the specs on it, let's let's let's, let's get it. Why not? Yeah, I think it's like the 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 boomer. Uh, the human eye can only see 30 fps, anyways. Right. Yeah, I don't know. So I think lowering latency is really big, though. Uh, this, yes. They talked about lowering uh, that that delay that you know your monitor has. They talk about like the one millisecond uh, uh, response time. So bringing everything down to to as real time as possible, even though it's very minute uh, in games that require reaction time. Uh, that's pretty big but i do agree i don't think the the average person or even like high skilled gamers will will see a major difference between 144 yeah. 240 and then 360 and there's actually a really good video by uh, linus tech tips that like has shroud yeah. in it too that they talk about you know the difference between 60 hertz 144 hertz and then the 240 so maybe they'll do another one now that this has been announced with the 360 I mean, at some point, you have to. You, you would think you'd hit the diminishing returns, right? So, and yeah, you know, I guess who knows when that that point is. Um, but I'm curious. Yeah, I mean, I, the difference between 60 to 144 is beyond noticeable. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, maybe as the tech gets better, it can be become more noticeable as we go higher up, or maybe we don't even. You know, there'll be research that comes out. And it's like, yeah, okay, we got scammed on the 360 or something. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We'll see. I'm, I'm curious. It does seem like it's some d diminishing returns there for sure. 100. percent uh, so that kind of, that's kind of it for everything that they talked about. And so you said you have a 2080 super or 2080? I just have a 2080. I don't think I got the super. Okay. And then I, I don't think I could, I could look myself in the mirror and, and, and buy that so close to Liam being born. So true, true, true. So in your opinion here, so here's like where people start to theory craft where it's like, Hmm, what, what, what is my, what are, what are my plans here? What am I gonna do now that this has been announced? Do you have what? What are your what are your thoughts? What are your reactions? Like, are you gonna are you gonna get this GPU? Is there one in mind that like really makes you want to buy it? Is this completely out of the question? So, like like you said before, I didn't even know this was dropping. Um, I need to know if my current computer because I don't want to buy something that's so big that I have to like upgrade a bunch of things. But is if, if my current computer can run? Like Cyberpunk 2077 coming up, I probably won't. If I need to get something like that, then I probably will. Because um, that's like really the only thing that's semi interesting to me. There's only a couple games that are coming out that I'm like, okay, I can I can see myself actually buying. Because um, I've been searching for a long time for something. Doesn't not, not necessarily a Planet Side Two replacement, but just something that I can play long for a while and and have fun with it. So um, if my current machine can run it, great. Because um, it's funny though, like I have this weird feeling of like. Whenever I get something like new and cool and that you know is a computer component, I just like assume that it's going to change the way a game looks. Which I mean, ultimately, yes, it could with the graphics, but or plays or something like that, like to like a just a drastic level, if that makes sense. Like mm -hmm. it's like oh, I put my new graphics card in, and it's like I go from black and black and white to like full color. Yeah, I don't know why I assume that every time I I, I upgrade my computer and then like I'll play Planet Side on Potato and be like, oh, it looks the same. It's like yeah, no shit. <laughs> You're not changing anything else, but um, I don't know. I'm excited though, and it's not that much money though. That's the thing. I mean, it is for some people, but like comparatively speaking, it's not that bad. 
a big reduction. And this is just the 3070, assuming exactly. they release like a 3060, uh, kind of like how there's a 2060. Uh, that could be even cheaper, and hopefully that that improvement is also like pretty major. So I don't know. For me though, I am. I was about to say it. Let me let me hear from you, man. In full force, ready to go, bro. Wait, what do you got right now? I have a twenty or a ten eighty Ti. So it's been three years. So it's been thirty years since you've upgraded. Okay. It's been three years. <laughs> Not thirty. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's been thirty. It's been three hundred years since I've upgraded. So <laughs> got a, you got three rocks in there. So I feel like what I want to do. I built this computer in 2017. It's treated me very, very well. What I think I want to do is move this PC over to be like almost like an entertainment PC. Like like at a TV. Your stream PC. Almost, yeah. Like at this point, it's still an extremely strong PC. But I don't want to sell it because I did a really good job building it, I feel like. So putting it at a TV and then putting more casual games on it, like almost like the controller games... And yeah, then yeah, playing yeah. those on TV, on the couch, that'll be more fun. Like playing. Well, plus, it's a backup, dude. Yeah, and it's a great backup computer to have. Um, and having a second computer is actually really big when you're troubleshooting issues. So, like, if your it's... graphics card's broken, just go grab your other graphics card, pop that out, put it in the computer, confirm that it's the graphics card that's broken. Um, exactly. But for me, I think that whenever there's a big generational leap from one graphics card to the next, CPU to the next... Uh, it's time for just a new PC build. So it's it's new PC time, bro. I'm, I'm looking at new PCs, and part of me wants to be really foolish and just buy the biggest graphics card, the 3090, uh, and just get, like, a really big processor, too, and then just, like, future-proof the shit out of it. Because I don't like... Like, this computer, I future-proofed really well. This computer will... You do seem will... like a guy that can be content. Because some people are like, oh, I'm going to future-proof, and it's like, oh, this next thing came out, let me buy this, and so mm-hmm. on and so forth. But you seem like, you said, you, you, you held it down. Yeah, the 20 series so... came out, wasn't interested. The Supers came out, wasn't interested. But this is like, I see on that graph where the 1080 Ti is on the little bottom down there, and then the 3080 is all the way up here, and then they didn't even show on the graph where the 3090 <laughs> is. I was like, I was like, how far am I about to jump here? And I'm like, that's worth it. But you, I mean, like, it, if the performance is so drastic, you could save several thousand dollars probably between your graphics card, like just component wise, and not have to fully future proof it and then still have that money available for whatever else you want to do right now or savings and whatnot. And then in a year or two, if you needed to, technically you'd have access to it. True. Yeah. So that so is I, the. Because they're so. The, the, three, the 3070 is the budget one, mm-hmm. and, but the performance is so big. So you, like, it, it creates really good options for you depending on what you want to do man that's a really exciting time i guess to build a pc so very nice and the the best part i guess to kind of to kind of close on on this is gpus coming out are are so great when it comes to wanting to give your computer a new boost because like cpus coming out for example it's hard because all right we're both about to open this at the same time <laughs> when you buy a four thousand dollar gaming setup so you can see you're at 0.27 kd and 120 fps dang bro why are you throwing me under the bus like that Travis? true bro dang uh but the <laughs> I saw that before. That's it, good it's just it's so simple to just pull one out and pop in the next one it's not like uh, the CPU where you have to literally buy a new motherboard, unscrew yeah, everything, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and and like plug in the new thing, take everything out. What's this fool say? It's a good thing you're, you've been making those car payments, Shocker. You might need to use your car as a case to fit the new 3090. Dang! Slide it into the backseat, yeah. bro. No, nah, it don't fit in my case. I have a good case. There's nothing that would block it. But anyways, I said it in the first Except place. For- it's gonna be GPU a full piece. Itself. So, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> Bro, it's like this big. Or the thirty ninety was. The thirty ninety is huge, but it would fit because my current graphics card is huge too. My you graphics. Full, you got full size case. No, you don't need a full size case for the thirty ninety. Uh, okay, hey, whatever, bro. We'll see. Uh, it does it, throw it, the. It, I think it's 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 its own case. Well, if you think about it, GPUs are literally just mini computers that are just by themselves it's running graphics like a, it's the size of a musket bro in length it's insane there are, there are laptops that i think are lighter there are several laptops lighter for sure. Oh, for sure. than the 3090 for sure laptops are shit and and this is all i leave these again with the caveat that we said earlier 
These are all from the alleged numbers. I'm not pre-ordering anything. I never pre-order. I am not a fan of pre-ordering. Ever since I took my finance class in college that talked about time value of money and how spending money now is way more valuable than spending money later. And if you have the choice between spending, let's say you have to spend $100 and you had the option between spending it now or spending it in three weeks, you would always take the three weeks assuming there's no interest. Because even if it's the smallest amount of inflation, $100 now is like $100 and one penny in three weeks because it's just money from the current, the, the second, the now is more valuable than money in the future. That's why you don't spend money in a paycheck you don't have. You spend the money in the paycheck that you do have. So I'm not buying anything until I see the reviews. I remember the 20 series, the 2080, the 2080 Ti, and the 2070 that came out and they were kind of scuffed. A bunch of updates had to happen, software, firmware updates, and then they were okay and they made them run well. But uh, yeah, I waited not, out, man. Yeah, they, they, they fixed them and then people bought them. So, same thing with me. I'm not buying this until I see everything's good and I'm ready to go. So, man, Kawhi, go away. Uh, so, that's kind of it, though. <laughs> <laughs> You literally like three seconds ago said he was leaving. He just can't. He it's can't, 940, he can't, bro. He can't help but beg for attention. It's 940 and he lives in a different time zone. So it's literally like 740 for him. I think it's literally like 3 p.m. where he's at. A little complainer. Uh, and, and luckily, you know, we have anchors now putting the chat right here so we can see him being a little bitch in the future. Damn, bro. Um, edit, edit that. Edit that too. Yeah. <laughs> and we can, we can see in the VOD when, uh, when Kawhi was just being a little girl. Uh, so oh, oh okay missions he has a mission to do later I understand that bro so Great for YouTube um, TOS we, we, we can't proceed any further but go ahead Let's... <laughs> oh yeah I'm not gonna say what his job is but um, but that's that's kind of that's kind of it for what we have left now we got a couple questions and I'll put the I'll put the link in one more time in chat so people can 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 read it uh, but yeah to end that graphics cards new technology really exciting stuff uh, and that's why we named the, the podcast The Future. The really future. exciting to see what's coming up in not only the game, uh, but just in life in general. Technology yeah. is increasing at a rapid rate, and it's really fun to see. Um, yeah, it's, it's exciting. So there's a really long question in here. That was logical. Uh, you, know you want me to just read the whole thing? Let's hit it. All right. I ain't about the storm, fam, but I'm cautiously optimistic that it'll discourage pop pop balling up slash zerging and that people who are more aware of it will distribute themselves more evenly on the lattices i do agree with that i think in the beginning it's not gonna have much of a change but as people become more used to the fact that it is a a in-game mechanic they're gonna want to avoid that happening to them so it's gonna be like a learning through you know getting your ass whooped over and over by this lightning storm because uh, it's not I don't think the design of it seems more of a, a nuisance rather than like it's going to murder everyone uh, but it the, does look like you can play around it while you're still there to a degree mm -hmm. okay we'll see. so the continuing this might mean we see people starting smaller fights on multiple lanes if that's the case I'd say that's a net plus but again it's contingent on how the average player reacts I'd rather have my choice of three different 12 to 24s than one grindy 4896 but that's just me I think that's everyone I would argue a lot of people like 24v24 yeah Depend, yeah, for the most part. Um, I, I don't. I'm. I'm so. I don't understand why they don't just tell us what the actual number of people there. Like the one to twelve, it's nice to know that there's seven people there. Because if it's one person, it's not worth it. But there's seven or eight people. It's sometimes it's worth going there. So I think that should be. That's something that maybe we should talk about and maybe ask Raul when we have him on here. Is why the hell do we not just know what the actual pop is? Ninety six plus, there could be four hundred people there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would be cool to just be like, rather than trying to figure out off the pie graph and the numbers on yeah. the top. It's like math is hard. Yeah, but <laughs> math is hard. Well, uh, you know. When you're in the, yeah, whatever. Continue. Uh, so the other possibility is that Pop balls up as usual. Since they haven't changed slash buffed the mechanics that go into starting new fights, and then parentheses saying pulling up a buzz, pulling a Valak, and placing a beacon, it could just end up making the big fights even less enjoyable. Because all in all, it doesn't add options or agency for Pop to distribute itself. Just an incentive. What are your thoughts, though? How do you think this will play out? Will platoons distribute themselves out to avoid the storm, or are people going to place the, play the same way, and now we're just going to get punished for it? Uh, I have a very strong feeling people are going to play the same way, man. Um, there's a, I, I, it, it was mind-boggling to me that you can cap a satellite base for a biolab 
spawn into the teleporter with instant spawn. It's the L building. You can have two to one enemy pop against you, and you're stuck in the spawn, and people will just run out. Or people will spawn in a fight, and they'll go as from point A, or from the spawn to point A, the, the easiest way, and they will just get farmed down that path over and over again. Um, it, it's mind-boggling to me, because people do it for hours. I don't understand mm-hmm. it. They could, go, they could choose to go wherever they wanted to. It doesn't matter if it's a platoon, a squad leader, or a solo player. People, I, it's, I don't understand it. It, it. it cannot be fun. So it does scare me that this will be something that, okay, um, it's at the tech plant, and the only fight is really at the tech plant, and so the storm's headed that way, or you know, it's at the tech plant, and I have no choice but to go to the tech plant because that's where the fight's at. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's almost like another thing to avoid. But I think about it, it's like, okay, vehicles are going to be hindered by this a lot more, so maybe it kind of balances out in, in regards to how I feel about it. I don't know. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think... Or they're just going to nerf it and get rid of it completely because people hate it on PTS or something. We'll see. Yeah, I, I think that from a player level, it is a good mechanic because uh, individual players who are following their own their own mindset of like, I want to do this thing. I want to do that thing will, will want to avoid it just because it ruins their experience. But I think from the overall like platoon leader, uh, squad leader, when I think of the meta that I used to, to, to participate in where I led a Zerg That's fit, uh, I didn't care where I sent them. I just wanted to capture the base. And if that meant throwing them into like a big 96 plus, uh, absolute horrible fight where they were getting 10 frames per second like i didn't care and that's where the majority of the pop ends up being because those zergs are just they they have platoon leaders that don't care they just want to capture bases so that they can get more resources and that's i think the core issue that needs to be fixed so from from a band-aid almost perspective where it's like we're trying to fix this this thing that a lot of a, a lot of the times we see on the map by by What's the opposite of incentivizing? By punishing, I guess. But it's not really even a punishment. It's more of like a deterrent. Uh, it, right. it seems more like a band-aid onto a bigger problem of maybe we just need to make Platoon smaller. Maybe if we're continuously descaling the game like this to make the, the engagements less like thick, maybe it's time that we also bring down the amount of people that you can even bring into the base through meaningful ways that doesn't actually restrict where you can go, but how many people you can lead. Um, I got two other things on this. One, I see a bastion. I go to a different fight. So maybe I see a storm. I go to a different fight. Maybe mm-hmm. it does work that way. Um, it's just more consistent, I guess, because the bastions aren't as consistent. So I could see it playing like that. And I know you want to be optimistic optimistic here, but you got to remember, dude, how many times do you see orbital strikes um, and, and, and on, on the dev stream? And we, we whine and we thought, oh, God, it's over. We thought the thumper and we, we, we shrieked. We, we shook in our boots. We got so nervous. It's over. The thumper is going to ruin every fight, myself included. Um, it's just been one thing after another that we thought, like, it's all over. This is it. And then it's like, oh, it's nothing. Okay. I can avoid this. Next. So I, I don't want to get to a point where we have 200 things on that list. But I, I, I could see it just being added to it, and it's only on one continent. So we'll mm-hmm. see. Um, yeah. I am actually optimistic about it because I don't think it's – like you said, it's more of a nuisance. Mm-hmm. Vehicles, I think, are going to struggle. Air, A to G is going to really struggle with it. So we'll see. Yeah, so maybe it will be better for us. But you know, Logica says like pop will aggregate around the meat grinder whether there are people organizing it or not. And I think having a deterrent like this is exactly like to my point. If it's, if it's not being organized and people are constantly getting punished for going into these big fights and they're almost being forced to die over and over again to something they can't avoid or go to a different fight, they'll start going to the other fights. Oops, I just like kicked my desk. Um, but it's for the organized people where, you know, you join that random AOD platoon when you log in on accident and then... Uh, it has 48 people and they have platoon waypoint on like a big 96 plus fight uh that i think isn't going to be solved from this so that's overall i think having more deterrence and then also incentivizing smaller fights and figuring out how to maximize those sweet spot fights those 24 to 48s and those 12 to 24s is is the path that they should go from and in my opinion it's one change that can be put into the game but there needs to be a, a, a more in-depth look at the game. And in my opinion, the best change would probably be reducing the size of a platoon. 
uh, and either making Boom, him. That, I have the fix right here. Go ahead, bro. I don't think pop is the issue in the game. I don't think having 200 players at a fight is the issue in the game. Um, I don't think we should have added the Bastion, the Orbital Strikes, the Storm, all these layers on top of the game um, just because it gets, like you said, too thick. Um, and I think we should... Like, if you could just go back a couple updates and, and those things aren't there and you just went back to the old resource system or you know timers for, for vehicles or maxes and, and you made them more of assets... Um, to where you know you can't there's a you want to protect it you don't want to just lose your atg and then pull another one like you can right now it's like okay i need to protect this and be a little bit more careful with this to where you play a little more um conservative so to speak um because you can't pull it for another 15 minutes or 20 minutes or whatever it is Mm -hmm. um i think that would help because i don't think infantry fights are really that bad for the most part because infantry is, is not every fight, but they, they have a good flow back and forth. There's a big, good, decent amount of tug of war when it comes to just pure infantry, which is, I think is healthy for the game. The game is stagnant when you can't move because there's too much shit going on. You can't cap the base. The cap, you know, it's just like this stuck, like, like a biolab almost sometimes. So I think if we if we went down that route, it would be better. But again, we're we're already here, so we'll see. And it's on PTS, so we don't know, man. Maybe the storm will be changed. We'll see what what, what gets uh, released to live. We've we've seen good things with Firestorm. Um, you know, I, I'm okay if the storm gets nerfed into the ground and then they can find a, a better spot for it later on. Uh, fine. Um, so I'm hopeful for the dubs to actually be smart when it comes to the storm. So we'll see. But I do agree with you. It does feel like another layer on top of it, another thing that I got to dodge or, or pay attention to. And I don't think that's the fix if what Shocker's talking about, what other people are talking about, is the issue. If we want to break up the pop and or not have all these things kind of building up all these force multipliers and we want to hold them down, I don't think the storm is the way to go about that. Mm-hmm. There's other better ways to go about that. But anyway enough of that uh, do, we, do you want to touch on that or do you want to move on to the next question no i agree uh so we can go on to the next question and that was a good question uh so how do you feel that they added three points to isotech plan i need to look at it man i do not like vehicle capture points because essentially what happens is um it's very hard to to, to maintain that hold without pop um and it kind of becomes something that just kind of caps by itself. And then maybe it's close enough to the point where it's applicable or realistic. Um, I think someone said the other points below the A point or on the ground floor somewhere, which could be interesting. I'm not necessarily opposed to that because um, it makes it um, a little bit easier to cap that base so you can't just stay upstairs and, and farm it. So the issue with, I think, the tech plan is when pop gets really big, everyone just stays on the A point and they just farm the grinder doors mm-hmm. or any of the grab pads up. And it's really hard to push in there against that. So I understand the thought process of maybe adding a couple points to it. And I see this as a test, right? People hated the idea of a triple amp station. Hated it. And I think it's one of the triple amp stations are one of the best things in the game. Mm-hmm. Um, so... By the way, my favorite base in the game is the three-point amp station. There's so oh. much fun to fight it. I, but these aren't hard spawns that you're getting, and one's a vehicle spawn, so I don't mind testing it for the sake of testing it. But we'll see, because Isaac Tech Plant is probably one of my favorite bases in the game because of its location. Obviously, all Tech Plants are relatively the same with minor changes. Um, but we'll see, man, because Azimir, before all this, was my favorite map. So, you know, hopefully it doesn't break me in half. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, I, I don't know what the structure of the new base is and where the points are, and I'll have to take a look at that, obviously. But uh, the Tech Plant was also my favorite base to go to on Azimir. And losing how it is is going to be a bit of a bummer if what the new product is is worse. Because some of my favorite memories, even when I go back to like the old YouTube videos where we had like backs cap highlights and stuff that I would upload and put on uh, the Emerald subreddit, like it would always be like Ice Tech Plant, Crazy Caps with the backs gang, the OG days. And, uh, you know, we there are strats for both attacking and defending it. It's a lot of different. Uh, a lot of different avenues for approach, whether you go underneath, through grinder doors, drop from above. There's a lot of different stuff that, you know, the tech plant meta, I almost call uh, it. Is, dude, I swear to God, I was about to say that. Go ahead, though. It's, it, it's developed very nicely. Yeah, it's, re- it's really, really well done already, in my opinion. And hopefully this is building upon it rather than taking away from it. So that's, that's, that's my thought, and we'll just have to wait and see. It's on test. Hopefully we'll have decent pop on test to be able to actually test it, or else we'll just wait till it gets on live, and then we'll try it out there. Um, well, I didn't even think about the tech plant. This is the last thing, and then I swear to God, you can just read the next question. Oh, go ahead, one. go ahead. Is a router on the tech plant with pop beca- without an orbital strike becomes very, almost impossible to dislodge. 
and I see having the other two points, you have to have one of the other two points. Mm -hmm. And having a point downstairs, if that's where it's at, is realistic for the defenders to still grab and hold on to, uh, but also realistic for the attackers to have another avenue do like the shield gens and whatnot to kind of control that fight a little bit so it's not such a cluster. But again, the the fights are weird because they're not always 200 players. Sometimes they're, they're, there's 30 players there, you know, etc. So it's very hard to balance the base around that. So we'll see. I don't know. It'll be fun to test, and hopefully it's not bad because it's a high traffic area and it's one of the best bases in the game. So we'll see. Agreed. Um, who is living inside of Aflix Beard? No one. It's I keep it clean. I keep it tight. I need. I. I'm so used to it being this long. I need to. The problem is though, like if I do anything, like if I, it just like folds in upon itself and it gets like weird, weird a weird look to it. So I need to kind of cut it down a little bit. So we'll see. Yeah, man. I'm still growing mine out, but uh, yeah, mine's mine's vacant of residence as well right now. We're accepting rent though. Uh, if you guys got some money and you need somewhere high, to move into, high level. Uh, do you think the exceptional implants will be cheaper than 45k? Um, so they were 45k. I'm not too um, sure because the exceptional implants are so you can't get those with ISO right now on live server. Okay, can you craft it with? Is it the 45,000 is the ISO or is it certs? It's the ISO that you use to craft it, rather okay. than because you know you can craft like a symbiote, you can craft assimilate with your ISO. Um, what they're saying is now the exceptional implants won't just be RNG. You can grind out your ISO, save up, and then get like. Uh, what are they called? Experimental stims, carapace, etc. I think that's okay because I spent three hundred thousand certs to get the rest of the exceptionals, and I got I think one or two, and I don't have them all yet. So, and that was before. That, that's not including the rest of the certs that I've spent on um, implants. Okay, so I think about three hundred thirds, 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 three hundred thirds. <laughs> 300 certs and i think about forty-five thousand iso um for the one that you want okay um i think that's a reasonable trade mm -hmm. i think yeah, it sure, just you can still buy packs but it depends on, on cards, well, you don't know if you're gonna get a charge out or not true 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 it's like I, I look at it almost like calories it's like how much are you putting in versus how much are you are you burning out and uh the if if we're getting a lot more iso from doing these missions then we will be okay Having them be expensive isn't isn't going to be a big deal, but they're end game things, guys. That I mean, I think you know, some of them you have to have, I think, for gameplay. Um, but they are kind of end game. It's some of them are. So I don't think it's a, the end of the world to have it forty five thousand. Ten thousand yeah. seems cheap, but again, ten thousand for me is cheap. But ten thousand for a newer player is not so cheap. So I don't know. And I wonder if this is being done mostly because the devs aren't really making money from the implant packs. Like, the fact that you can buy them with certs probably means that they don't really have anybody spending Daybreak cash on implant packs. And I don't think anybody would be like, hey, um, you trying to, you trying to buy, <laughs> you trying to buy this implant pack with real money? It's like, no, I'll just play for like an hour or something and then get enough certs to buy it. So... Uh, yeah, I don't, as I think they're starting to veer away from it being a money making thing because it's not making them any money. And, uh, hopefully with the new missions, we'll end up increasing that flow of A7 and ISO, and then you'll be able to buy them for, you know, a, a price that makes sense. Because you have to look at it as a time investment rather than a price. Like, if it takes me, like, 10, 15 hours to unlock an exceptional, then I think that makes sense. But if it takes me three months to get enough ISO to get one, it's like, all right, well, then we have a problem here because I don't think it's even worth that grind. And then I'm not even going to try for it. Yeah, but I see it also as like something like instead of using your certs to try to get lucky, like I literally took, I don't even have them all and I spent probably 300000 So it's like you can spend the certs on the stuff that you need for your classes. And then, you know, obviously you have enough certs until you have 45,000 ISO or whatever it is. You can buy packs as you go and then maybe you get lucky and get it and then you're done. You don't have to worry about it. And you can spend that ISO on whatever. Or you don't get it buying the packs and then you slowly build up to 45,000. I feel like it's like a, it doubles the way to get to your goal. Mm -hmm. So you have a chance to get there no matter what, or you might get lucky in a pack. True. Yeah. And I think maybe even making them not implant packs this is kind of veering off of the question, but making them just packs if you want to make them more profitable for them so that people will actually want to buy them with money because getting an implant is kind of meh. 
Like, why would you spend money on an implant? But if they started making them more like what they really wanted them to be, aka loot boxes, which is on one side cringe, but also a pretty good money making uh, approach. It's like you could you could add more variety to what's in these packs in order to make money. But if they're veering off of the loot box experience in general, then as long as it makes sense that you're not grinding months to get this, then it should be okay. Uh, the... I could also see it being something where they want to wipe out people's ISO stockpiles, maybe. Who know, for maybe an upcoming update. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, like, maybe that's dumb, but I, I could see them like having a bunch of data where it's like, okay, we have this many players that have fifty thousand ISO just chilling there. I mean, I think about me. I have fifty k cert. I have fifty one thousand certs. I have nothing to spend it on. Mm -hmm. You give me an option to spend it on something because I want X thing. I mean, I probably would spend it on that. So. Uh, so let's see. Next question. Um. Hey, great stream. What's up, my fellow veteran casters? What's up, soldiers in chat? 07. I try not to boast, but I've been in this war since 2012, which means I'm very good with 23,000 confirmed kills. 2KD tryhards often flame me for being a zergling in 2020 and falsely calling me, calling me bad just because I have a negative KD. Little do they know, I have orders from my BR-35 platoon lead to die on point which is the only reason us veteran zerglings don't farm these no-skill farmers. We choose to lose 1v1s. Anyways, that, <laughs> what does that first part even mean? Anyways, due to my several alert wins because I'm a legendary war veteran, I have a huge pile of ISO and all implants maxed out. What would you suggest, suggest the devs add so I can get rid of this excess ISO? Thank you for your time, commanders. Nighthawk main signing out. 07. <laughs> Yo, can I get a try hard 7 for night whatever commander? I don't know. No, that uh, sounds like um, Ander, bro, because he's been dunking me with the Nighthawk. Maybe it's not, though. I, don't, I haven't seen him in chat. Um, but in regards to... It, it's just like anything, bro. I have a bunch of certs. What, just add new gun, new things to the game. You mm -hmm. could literally add new armors for 1,000 certs or 10,000 certs. I'd buy them if they're cool. Um, uh, you could add more implants. I mean, that's the easiest way to do it. To add more implants, therefore I buy more packs, or I spend more ISO to upgrade them. That's the easiest way to do it: is just add more things to the game that are cool or that are meta or almost meta. Like cat like is a good side thing, you know. Some people actually use that. I don't use it, um, but it, it's something that's viable. So you just add more viable things to the game, so you can spend your ISO on it. Mm -hmm. um, that's the easiest way to do it. I think also or, or tr trade ten thousand ISO for five thousand certs. I don't know, or you know have some weird thing to where if you need more certs you could trade them out i don't know i i think implants and iso are a hard thing to to figure out i feel like iso should almost be pushed into multi-purpose realm maybe combined with a7 i don't know why it's two different things to be honest um because when you get to this point where you have all the implants you want you kind of just start stockpiling this thing that you're never going to use. And then the devs are in this situation where they're like, all right, how do we make them use this? All right, we have to make something like Firestorm, which makes your gun just insanely overpowered. And it's like, oh, no, it breaks the game. We got to bring that back. And it's like this weird, like, min-maxing that they have to do. And it's just more effort than I think it's worth. In my opinion, the ISO and A7 should just combine to be one thing. And then make them go into the same pool and then just increase the amount. Just combine the amount that you would get and then fix the cost of everything to align with what the devs think is okay. Because when you get all of the different the all the different implants that you would want, like me, I'm never gonna buy a new implant. I already unlocked Firestorm from the directive. I have a symbiote, I have assimilate, I have athlete, I already have all the ones that I would need. So they would need to add something that's more competitive than those. And that risks breaking the game and making people unhappy. So in my opinion, it just, like I said, it needs to go to this point where, uh, and I don't want to see pre ISO four implants from when I used to play where you had to charge your implants to keep them working. And I would oh always forget God. to charge my implants, bro. I feel like, why is my screen? That was when battle hardened was always the one you would use. Like you needed battle hardened. Everybody ran battle hardened. So I would always forget to fucking charge it. And I'd be like, why is my screen shaking like crazy? And it's like, oh, you haven't charged Battle Hardened. So, I don't know. I, I, you know, great question surrounded by a solid meme. I like questions like this. Uh, that was actually, uh, yeah, that was a, a twofer. Thank you. Yeah. Good uh, question. Do you think the game requires an animation overhaul? 
You know, somebody said this in my chat uh, a couple of days ago, I think, and Rel came in the stream and said that they are working to clean up animations, I believe is what, is what he used. And if you're in chat and, and you can remember what he said, that'd be great. Um, I'm okay with the animations, I guess. Like, what would what would be different? The way that we run or something? I think, I think it'd just be FPS... weird to see that. It would bother me. But yeah, I guess I guess maybe you can touch a little bit deeper on this and, and what they're what they're referring to here. I think the frames and because you can get a lot of frames in game, but the mm. the animations aren't at the same frame rate as the, the the frames that you're getting in game. So like for example, running, reloading. Uh, and there are a lot of scuff things in the game that we still see. I think the one thing that everybody still sees is people, like someone will stand there and then you'll run by them and then their legs will just start freaking out everywhere and yeah, then they'll go yeah. back to normal. So there are like certain things that need to be like fixed up. Uh, but overall, I think it's not a priority, but it is definitely something that should be on the list of priorities. Just a little bit further down. Because like, like right now saying. we need the game to be fun and then we can fix like the the little quality of life fixes that i would call it yeah I, i'm not i'm not gonna quit the game because the decimator reload bugs there i'm not gonna quit the game because somebody's legs go like this okay mm -hmm. those things are annoying or as Quint just said the theorem shuffle and the crouch spam which are annoying i wouldn't mind that being cleaned up those are not the reasons that i'm leaving the game i want it to be fun like you said i want it to to not feel like i'm avoiding 15 different systems or assets in the game that are not fun for me so um but Rob did say in the stream that they're looking at clean up those animations whether or not not that means that they're shuffle or crouch spam or the leg splitting or just weird things that are going on in the game um hopefully that will i mean well they're they're aware of it and they're working on it which is cool for him to come in and, and say because i don't think that's been said anywhere else at least i'm not aware of it so it was nice yeah, and uh, commander outlier says the book of priorities it's more like a scroll it's just really fucking long <laughs> Um, That's in any game, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, what car do you drive? Uh, I think that's talking to me. I think I was talking about my car earlier. I, I drive a Kia Stinger. It's a... Uh, Google it. I'm Googling it right now. <laughs> a Kia Stinger. It's pretty cool. I like it a lot. Oh, that's pretty cool, bro. I like that. Yeah. It's like 400 horsepower, twin turbo. That's actually pretty nice, bro. Look at you, dude. Yeah. It's like... I was When I was looking for a car, I was driving a Civic... Oh, oh! You didn't hear what Aflix said. Oh, Aflix said he drives a uh, what's it called? Okay, hold on, man. Hey, fall back, bro. Twenty twelve Nissan Altima. That's what Zoe has, and then I have a two thousand six Ford five hundred, Ford five hundred, all black with the chrome accents. Um, you know, it's a classic, bro. It's a classic. Um, but I think we're looking at like getting like a four runner, maybe, or I think she wants a Rav four. So get an FJ get Cruiser, bro. Those are fire. FJ Cruiser, what the hell is that? It's FJ a Toyota. Cruiser. Cruiser. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know what I really. I've never thought about. I've never been big into cars, and I never thought like get a G wagon. <laughs> that'd be dope, but I mean, obviously, those are so expensive. Um, so I don't know. I, 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 I never got to the point, and like now I'm there. It's like, what do you want in a car? What's like, what's a fun car for you? So it's something that I'm. I guess I'm kind of looking at now. Yeah, for me, last year I was driving a 2012 Honda Civic, started to fall apart, and the there's like the transmission was getting messed up. I was constantly changing tires. I was just like, you know what? It's time. And then I bought the civic when I was driving, uh, or I bought the civic when I was working at a grocery store. But then since then I've graduated from college, I have way better income. So I was like, I'm going to buy this. So I drive a 2019 Kia Stinger. It meets all of the things I want. I wanted a car that was fast. Wasn't two doors because my civic was a two door and can barely fit me. I'm six, two four, doors. I'm 6'4", driving a Civic, my head would always be, like, against the ceiling. And I would get out of the car and Wait, people would... Wait, how tall are you? I'm 6'4". No, you're not. Yeah, I am. I why, why do you think when I stand up, you can't see anything, bro? Like, I'm literally, like, I'm tall as hell. You think the camera's, like, really high up or something? You're 6'4"? Yeah, I'm 6'4". Like, sit the fuck back down. Are you are you fucking with me? No, I'm actually six four. What are you talking about, bro? Dude, you're humongous. I'm tall as fuck, bro. That's why I always call you puny when I talk to you, bro. I always <laughs> fuck the fuck out of you, bro. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I'm gonna say it right now, bro. So uh, six four. That's, yeah, whatever. That's uh, that was the last uh, time I measured too. I could be six five. I don't even know. 
So, but yeah, the car met all my things. It's, it's like a hatchback, but it doesn't look like one. So it's really good trunk space. I can flip the back seats down. Leather interior. It's fast, fuel efficient. The only other car that I would want outside of it is probably like an electric car, like a Tesla or something. So, Okay, Chad's getting ridiculous. I wish he hadn't said that. Um, Krindus, I'm not going to ask again what car did you get, what truck did you get. And um, yeah, no, cars are named different things in different countries. I didn't know that until I started looking at... Um, cars and SUVs recently. Yeah, have you heard of the Ford Nova that released in Mexico? Uh, yeah, I think, yeah. Mm, Do you know what maybe. Nova means in Spanish? Uh, you told me this not that long ago, what? Nova means doesn't go, like can't go. So they dropped a car called Won't Go in Mexico. It's like, <laughs> it's one of the greatest, uh, like marketing, international marketing failure story that you le- you learn in like business school. So I thought that was funny. Or is it the Chevy? My bad, Chevy Nova. I thought it was the Ford, are you sure? I'm pretty sure it's a Ford. Yeah, it's a Ford. It's the Ford Nova. Or it's the Chevy Chevy. Nova. It's the Chevy Nova. (laughs) Damn, I tried. No, because somebody, all I did is the the, the Google autocorrect said it was a thing. So Mm. my bad, my bad, guys. My bad. Congrats, by the way, Corinne. That's awesome, man. Good for you, man. That's actually really, really, really cool. So My bad. Dang, 2019 Nissan Frontier. Gold. Interesting name, man. But uh, we have one more question. We actually have three more, but two are memes. Like Kawhi said, Planet Side Two Omega Lol. He's never used that emote in his life. He doesn't even. He's a nerd. And then Yasber asks, "How good are you at Kenshi?" Well, I told you I'll play it eventually, bro. And then Aflick doesn't even know what that is. Uh, but we I have one more. Kenshi is. I'm not... Oh, because I'm not six four. Shut the fuck up. Oh, because you don't know anything other than games. You just know Planet Side, bro. You 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 will ne- you would still be on your old computer Bro, if it I wasn't for streaming, because you stream. The only reason you have a better computer is for streaming. Look at it, I got him. <laughs> it's true, bro. You'd still be on the old PC. You were getting enough frames. You probably tried streaming. You were like, this ain't gonna work. Uh, oh, but the last question: I've been fighting for the Terran Republic since the year of twenty three forty four, since the war started, brother. I've been That's through hell and back. And have sent many Planet Man souls to the grave. Therefore, I have maximum skills and deserve respect. Yo, why are you thumbs upping him? He's part of the TR, bro. Oh. Damn. Uh, I meant I meant, I meant, for the, the boys that he slayed, bro. Oh, yeah. Respect to the fallen the new NC. conglomerate soldiers. Anyways, what do you guys think about the clear NC favoritism by the dev team? The what? Apparently, there's a clear... New conglomerate favoritism. There is a bias towards the NC from the dev team. What are your thoughts? Maybe when Higby was around with his hair, um, uh, our Mac sucks now. Um, VS has the Beetlejuice, which I don't know if you know, has a heat mechanic and it's pretty cool and very unique and used to be super OP and, and is now in, in a good spot. Um, all the two Giddy Heavies play VS for the most part. And they, they hide behind the uh, excuse that VS has lowest pop, whatever the fuck that means. Um, and um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I think NC struggles the most, man, at least on Emerald. So maybe I'm not seeing something. Maybe you're on a Connery recursion is and they play and see their they used to so i don't know yeah I, do I, I don't i think this is just a troll question i don't think at this point i don't think there's really any favoritism when it comes to the current dev team i think any arguments that come from the favoritism argument like why is this faction better than the other faction are just like legacy historical things that have been in the game forever so everyone's always like the beetlejuice vs is overpowered they have darker duller darker color because they're purple so it's harder to see them at night like all that stuff is like it's stuff that's been in the game forever but the current additions that have been added to the game are all equal bastions are on every faction colossus isn't on every faction so it's like i don't know for me it's uh, historical artifacts is the phrase you're looking for no you could say legacy we like whenever I talk about the old company I work for when before they renamed and merged, we call it Legacy IIS. It's like the old thing, but Alpha's correct. So I guess that I was just a meme. Uh, but outside of that, that's kind of it for the questions. Huh? Yeah, we didn't get any more questions. Uh, yeah, are you okay, Ready Bagel? Uh, Is it a car accident? Oh uh, dang! You need to be represented by an attorney. Were you injured? Dang, he's already selling himself. Have you or a loved one suffered from mesothelioma? (laughs) You may be entitled to financial compensation. (laughs) That's impressive. Low speed? Okay. 
Okay, that's uh, that's a, that's our podcast, right? That's I mean, GG. Yeah. Appreciate you guys hanging out. We can we can go play Warzone. We can do whatever we want. Um. All right, plug cool, man. plug your shit, bro. Um, I we need follow the YouTube, aka subscribe to the YouTube. I don't like that YouTube subscribe and then Twitch is subscribe, but costs money. The YouTube subscription is obviously free. You just mm. it's like following essentially. Um, we would appreciate that. It is down below on Twitch uh, for you guys to click on and then obviously give it a thumbs up leave a comment for us if you have any criticisms or you want a guest on the show eventually we're going to have Ro um, we're going to go through some of our you know infantry elitists um, you know players and have them on the stream as well and then, you know we're just going to go through the community and find people that we want to also have on the show so if you guys want somebody leave it on YouTube so we have a permanent place for it and then we can see that or if you guys have a topic you want us to cover or if there's something inter- interesting in regards to gaming technology plant side to whatever put it there as well and we can touch it in the next episode so um and essentially we just want to interact with the community and that's a fun way of doing it so um the more active you guys are on youtube the better for us um and it convinces shocker to keep doing this um so yeah i mean Obviously, we're on my Twitch right now. Um, I plug the YouTube, and then I don't know if you want to talk about your 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 shit, but let's do it. Uh, yeah. What I will say is, uh, we have really good viewer engagement. Um, but something I have noticed is, uh, you know, a lot of people pass by because they see the channel on the directory, but they don't follow the channels. So you know, give a flick a follow, give me a follow. Both our names are on the top. You just hit follow here, and then you can just look up my channel name on the top too. Give both of us a follow. Uh, it does mean a lot. It helps us. It shows us that we're doing a good job. And uh, also, give us some feedback on your guys' thoughts of us, you know, branching off of Planet Side for a bit and talking about other things. Uh, you know, and the- we can talk about we can talk about we can talk about other things in Planet Side besides infantry. If you guys have a topic again you want us to talk about or something that you think is controversial, we're not going to be mad at you or or you know shame you or anything like that. If you want us to talk about something else, we can do that. Or sorry, Shark, to interrupt you. If you have other topics, let us know. We would, at some point, plants that might die. So we need mm-hmm. to be ready to transition um, to something else. And that's what we're slowly looking at doing. Not not completely leaving plants that behind because that is our main thing right now. So um, definitely interact with us because we – that's the only reason we're doing it is because of the community. So True. Yeah. Why are you, why are you making that face, bro? Like you're oh, cringing at what I'm saying. I think somebody went to uh, my channel and followed me, and I never turned off my, uh, my stream alerts or whatever. So uh, okay. it, it randomly just like <laughs> it randomly made a noise that somebody followed, but um, but yeah, the falls also yeah, the guys that have followed during the stream we appreciate that it means a lot to us. Yeah, big big thanks, and uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. It might be next week, it might be in two weeks. We're still trying to figure that out, but hopefully we'll have Rel. We'll have some other people on to interview, and until then, I've been Shocker. This has been Aflick, and we will see you guys on the next one. Goodbye. Goodbye.